Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Well, if you're tired of all these people trying to break the Guinness Book of World Records stuff, well, I'm sorry, you're going to hear more about it. Oh, good. Yeah. Though this video, I have to say, I mean, uh, you know, if you've ever been to a carnival and you're trying to, you know, use a water pistol to shoot something to get the, like the clown or the horse oh. races or any of those things, it's not easy. Those are my favorites, though. At the like the at the Washington State Fair, whenever I see those, I kind of get excited. Like I want to play them. My wife thinks I'm I'm weird. She's like, "Why are those the ones that you get most excited about?" I'm like, "I don't know, man. When you fill up that clown mouth and the balloon goes, yeah. or the horses race, yeah, yeah. it's exhilarating." <laughs> well, we got this Idaho. Dude. No rev. <laughs> it's just filling no. the clown mouth. I mean, I know what you're talking about. Wow. But... Oh, well, squirting the clown mouth. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. Don't urban dictionary with that. the pistol. Yeah. 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 Squirt, this squirt. is unfortunately, uh, you know, Steve, your life. You know, you can't say anything, even if it's real. People are going to be like, oh. Ho, 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 ho. I mean, that's a, everybody's problem other than me. Yeah. Truth. Uh, yeah. Well, it's everybody's problem because of you. Yes, yeah. I'll give you that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, there's an Idaho dude, Steve, who uh, definitely likes to fill the clown mouth and do more with his uh, with his water gun. As uh, he uh, reclaimed, I guess somebody took this from him. He was not happy and reclaimed the Guinness World Record by shooting. 47 targets with a water gun in just 30 seconds. Mm. Well, right? I, I, this, I, I mean, I don't know how he is with a real gun, but at least this comes in handy if he's got a super soaker and somebody tries to mess with him. Uh, his name is David Rush. Great name. Oh, this and, is the guy. We've taught this guy. This, he breaks all the records. I'm yeah. looking at the video. I'm like, this yep. guy again? Yeah. The chainsaw guy, the yeah. everything guy. Does I, he have I, a I, job? I, no, when yeah. I saw this the video, yeah. Job. This, yeah, he probably gets the YouTube views. Oh, you're right. Yeah, good point. I, I thought I thought we, we I thought we took a look that his YouTube views weren't the greatest, so we thought maybe he's got to do something else. Well, I mean, also he does he promotes STEM uh, through uh, through all of his weird things like juggling. So he's okay. a promotional he's speaker. So author, yeah, speaker, yeah. He probably he probably comes to like junior highs and high schools and says, "Hey, kids, stay off drugs and juggle." And he's also the inspiration behind the first ever BJ makes weenie toss. Yep. That's right. He's the, oh, he's the guy, isn't he? He is the guy. Yeah, I forgot about that. I mean, he, right. he truly is our inspiration. Yeah. All he's right. the wind I, beneath our wings. This is, this, our, is why, this is why I don't like David Rush. I didn't realize it was because he was the inspiration for, you know, one of our best ideas in a long time. Uh, so here he is. David Rush, 250 records that this guy has broken. <laughs> and yes, the water gun record, though, was taken from him, and he took it back. Three, two, one, go. Go. Oh, that's it. All right, so we've got 45, 46, 47, and that 48 might be possible. Previous record of 37. And so if you've got a question about who's going to win the water fight between me and my son, it's me. Oh, jeez. Is he doing it just to yeah. squirt his son? His kids must be real proud. Yeah, okay. Oh, is that a record? Wow. I know. I'm watching this. He's just shooting little targets with a water gun. And his yeah. son is probably excited because he's the one filming. Well, like, yeah. You see him in you the know, background. Maybe it's like a bonding sort of thing. All right. Okay. I'm just I'm looking at his website. And he's like the world's fastest juggler. Look, okay. we're clowning on like, this guy, but hmm. I'd rather this than having, like, look, I, I love my dad, obviously. But, like, you know, I mean, our, our weekends entailed, like, Steve and go out there and mow the lawn or <laughs> yeah. Steve and go get me some paint and hold this paint while I paint the fence. Like, this wasn't, if, if all of a sudden he was like, Steve and go grab your water gun, we're going to shoot targets. I'm like, Dad, what happened? You just became awesome. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, we goof on right. this guy, yeah. but this guy's probably having the best. Their kids... I hope they realize how much how lucky they are. Like they get to do stupid stuff all the time with their dad. That's a really good point. As, a, as opposed to doing chores, you know, okay, I got to do what? Hold this camera while you're balancing a chainsaw on your head. Okay, right? Yeah. All right. 
Yeah, like, oh, you want me to throw than... marshmallows in your mouth to see how many you can, how many you can catch? All right, Dad. Yeah, it speeds cleaning toilets. I don't have to paint Street. the house. Okay, yeah. all right, I'm I'm all for this, Dad. <laughs> Uh, you can check out the video on the BJ and Miggs page of KISW.com. David Rush is the guy. And if you're wondering about the BJ and Miggs party of Pain in the Grass and the, and the weenie toss, you can see uh, one of his videos and see what inspired it. Man, now I feel like next year we're going to be doing the water gun thing. <laughs> Uh, I feel like all of your ideas are going to come from his YouTube channel. Is really yeah, what's why not? Happen. Or we could do the catapult marshmallow into your mouth world record. That's oh, a thing. That sounds dangerous. <laughs> yeah, have, uh, do we have to well, sign waiver? If we have to sign a waiver for something, we probably shouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, you could, oh. you could you could probably choke on that. Yeah. Oh, it's not as bad as I thought. I'm watching the video. I thought the catapult was more of like a slingshot. It's like a soft lob. Okay. And you just well, kind of well, let the, the marshmallow f- like land in your mouth and you just like let it fall out right away. You're not having to keep it in there. Yeah, here's the problem though, is I would just keep eating them. <laughs> yeah. They are delicious. Yeah, yeah. How do you Can't how do you help take it, man? Yeah. I, I, how do you take that in your mouth like that and not want it? Mm-hmm. Guess what was that, BJ? Well, yeah. Yeah. I, guess. yeah. I know. I'm just, uh, you know, it's a marshmallows or a thing. And I'm the one that's a problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'm glad you finally admitted it. We've got a college basketball coach that gave his players the oddest advice. And it had to do with farting. Steve's going to tell you all about this. He's got the mix report for you at 617 on the rock. DJ and Mix mornings on the Rock ninety nine point nine KISW ninety nine point nine KISW the Rock of Seattle. If you're hearing an informative newscast right now, well then you must not be listening to PJ and Mix live from the KISW News Center in downtown Seattle. This is the Mix Report. Well, thanks, you guys. Thanks to Law Tigers for giving us the major report. And today, it's a day to celebrate with your aunts and uncles. Because it's aunts and uncle, aunt and uncles day. Oh, all, right. all right, then. Uh, hey, what? Well, uh, that's uh, really uh, not, not, uh, not doing it for you, huh? Well, it's really not. I mean, it's also National Coffee Milkshake Day, which I think is an Ooh. oddly specific one. Can well, I just have a milkshake? Do? Well, with your aunt and uncle, that's what they get. You know, you, you're not going to give them the good stuff. Wait, is that a frappuccino? Oh, I was thinking maybe like a Jamocha shake. Okay. Because, I mean, there's mocha in the name, right? Mm -hmm. I used to make them for people, like, uh, just vanilla ice cream, some chocolate syrup, cup of coffee, boom. I don't think I've ever had a coffee milkshake. Sounds good. If you get fancy, you could do the coffee ice cream. It's just a coffee-flavored milkshake where Rev Mocha is coffee and chocolate together, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. I mean, yeah, yeah, I I was just nitpicking. Just, just give me well, a milkshake. Well, all no, right. Well, there you go. Yeah, you give me that milkshake. It's not, it's not milkshake day, but okay then. So, yeah, I mean, if you I'm going to have a coffee it. and a milkshake, and I'm going to be like, you know what? You if go. you want to nitpick me, go screw yourself. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you are having a coffee milkshake in a way, so yeah. It's also World Tofu Day, which is like... Pass. Whoa! Like you know, every day for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of folks are saying stay away from the tofu these days, the soy products. I, I've been hearing that. Why are they saying that now? Uh, well, I, I something about hormonal situation. Yeah, but you gotta yeah. like have like a nonstop supply of soy for that. I know people are like, oh, you're gonna grow some boobs. And it's like, yeah, if I just ate soy every second of my day, I, but it, it's all in, it's all That's in moderation. What I, I, I was doing that for a while because soy was the only replacement for meat until they come up with other stuff, you know, like That's this plant based stuff. Yeah, so I was a little worried about it. My You'd have to eat a lot of tofu for it to actually have that kind of an impact. Well, I know the people right. I've oh. heard from. Oh, all right, then. Well, I'm happy to hear that soy's back on the table. Okay, good. It's also National Bagel Fest Day. Oh. So, I'm sure, you see, I saved the best for last, bagels. Yeah, that's that's good. Okay. <laughs> but Rev, yeah, Rev did make a good point, though, even though it's, because uh, coffee is in the Jamocha Shake, I believe, and the Jamocha Shake is <laughs> delicious. Now we're going back to it, huh? <laughs> you know what? Well, I just, well, I just think that Rev made a good point bringing up one of the tastiest shakes out there, is all I'm saying. Yeah, well, I don't know if you can sprinkle some caffeine in there, and we, we can say it's like a, a coffee shake. And throw some tofu in there, okay. and there you go. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and pour uncle? it on a bagel. Okay. Yeah. Do you understand what mocha is? Uncle. Do yeah. you do you do you genius? Mocha is coffee. It, th- there is coffee in a mocha shake. It's, that's what a mocha is. It's coffee and chocolate. So jamocha does count. All right. I mean, I'm t- I'm, don't tell me I can't have my jamocha. I gotta go. All right. We're don't gonna be need a you jamocha. to calm down, BJ. I want a jamocha <laughs> shake. <laughs> 
I just want a Chewbacca shake, that's all. I'm, I'm not going to stop you. Okay, thanks, buddy. All right, let's talk about this basketball coach who's not going to stop his students from traveling to Israel. Actually, they're all going there because, well, Auburn University basketball coach uh, Bruce Pearl, he's taking his team to Israel for some games. And while right. he's there, he has some advice for his players. And this is the strangest piece of advice, but you know what? If I end up ever end up in Israel, I'm never going to forget this piece of advice. And I'll probably tell it to my wife, and she'll think I'm insane, but I'll have okay. some kind of research to back it up. His advice said, hey, if you're anywhere near that Dead Sea and you're, in, and you're, you're swimming around in the Dead Sea, do not fart. Uh, what? Right. Why is that? He says, because it hurts. What? <laughs> Apparently, what? the sea is super salty, and it burns if it gets in your eyes or any kind of uh, opening of your Ooh. body. Oh, so if you are... So if you, like, are ripping... Oh, whoa. All of a sudden, that saltiness is just going to hurt. That's actually really good advice when you think about it, because you know he did it. Yeah. So, I mean, it makes for easy floating, but while you're floating, you might want to keep it clenched. Oh, wow. And not eat anything that's going to make you fart, Rev. Yeah, well, time you go to Israel yeah. to swim in the Dead Sea. So don't need anything. Okay. And don't go number one either, apparently. Oh, you got ah, that's, that, that's a good point as well. Oh, oh my gosh. You know what? Just don't go in the Dead Sea. That's yeah, I think that. I mean, it is called the Dead Sea. Kind of don't know if I want to go to Float a place Float there like for that. a second, get a picture, and get right back out. Yeah. All right. So you know how I have this issue with robots, right? Yeah, you do. You are all about Skynet being what's going to happen, like the Terminators are documentary. Well, yeah, I have another story about it, and I think you guys are going to be on my side. So there's a chess-playing robot that was playing chess against a seven-year-old at the Moscow Chess Federation. And that robot broke that seven-year-old's finger. What? Yeah, apparently it broke the finger during the game. I guess the robot that had some flaws and the operators overlooked it. The child made a move. And I guess you're supposed to give the robot some time to respond, but the boy hurried. So the robot, for some reason, grabbed the kid and broke its finger. That'll teach no. you some patience. Yes. Whoa. The, the robots are... So, that's not cool, man. And the boy, like a true chess player, nothing stops him. Got his finger in a cast and continued playing. Nice. Did he beat the robot at least? Uh, you know, that's the funny part. The story doesn't say who won the match. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to see the robot like, just destroyed him afterwards. Oh, just come broke on. him in half. Oh, yeah, man. just like I break your finger and I break you. It was weird. It broke the finger and then it goes. It's a robot. Oh, they call it the Drago 4000. I don't understand what's going on. Okay. <laughs> Listen, that's not the best part of the Rocky movies. They even took it out of it, didn't they, in the redo or whatever? Oh, the robot, but not Drago. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Uh, Broke the kid's finger? The kid's yeah, hand that's... handled it really well. Because if it was me, I'd be screaming Boy. and wailing and stuff. Like, he's actually wow. keeping calm. Oh, he's probably like, I don't want to piss this robot off anymore. Right? And he's just like, ow, holds his finger. Like, I would have been like, ah! Yeah, this is, I mean. This is why I don't play chess against robots. Yes. Oh, is this why you don't oh, play okay. chess against robots? <laughs> oh, there was a lot. I, I knew there was a reason. And now we found out what it is. Uh, we have to have a moment of silence and uh, a rest in peace. And say goodbye to the Choco Taco. Dude. <laughs> I don't know if you guys want to talk about it, but apparently. <clears throat> there you go. Hey. It's done. After 38 years. Everyone is like freaking out about I'm so it mad the about internet, this. And I'm like, when was the last time you had a Choco Taco? And literally everyone's response is like over 10 years ago. Right. A couple, like, we exactly. yeah. a couple weeks ago. Dying. Thank you very much. Oh, I'll see Rev has a right go. to be upset. Yeah. Me okay, personally, man. never had one. I, I, I don't think oh, really? I ever ordered one. No, it always, I don't understand. I, I, it never appealed to me. No, I'm me like, either. No, they give me a strawberry it. shortcake if I'm going to buy something on an ice cream truck. Mm. Yeah, that's the problem. The problem is, is that there were other things that I liked, but when I had a Choco Taco, I mean, when it was the only thing, they are delicious. See, yeah. the only places I would ever get a cho uh, Choco Taco would be either an ice cream truck or at a restaurant, Mexican restaurant, like that my dad worked at. I don't know what you do in your free time when you're choking your toco, but... <laughs> choco Taco. <laughs> okay, wow. Didn't they used to do it, like, for, okay. uh, for a split second at Taco Bell? Like, wasn't that their thing? I, I don't know. Oh, that might I be a no Mandela idea. effect, man. I remember that. Well, I see, I, yeah. It probably is. I remember I don't know. it being a thing, and it was just like, oh, the Taco Bell finally has Choco Tacos. And it was like a big thing for like a year, and then it stopped. Yeah, they did it just for a little while. Well, look at that. Wow. It does make sense. If you're going to offer some kind of desserty thing at Taco Bell, the, the Choco Taco, <laughs> as Vicky would say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they should bring it back at Taco Bell since you can't get it anywhere anymore. I, that, it's oh, nostalgia. Oh, Make their own version. Yeah. Yep. yeah. There you go. It's nostalgia for me. That's really what it is. Because, uh, you, you know, Steve, you're right. When was the last time I had one? I can't even tell you. <laughs> 
But you, knowing they're not there saddens me. Yes. Like, <laughs> and that's the ta- thing. Taco Bell can do the Doritos Locos Choco Toco Taco. Man, hard I'm to in. Say. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> and it's funny. You're right. It's like being like. Not being invited to a party, and you find you're not invited to a party. You're like, I can't believe I'm not invited to a party. And someone's like, Would well, you have gone? No. no, no, but I <laughs> like, still want to know that I'm cool enough to be invited. Right. You still want to know that it's available for you to purchase, even though you're never going to buy it. Yeah. And if I was like craving like a chocolatey ice cream treat, I would go with the with the the the, the chocolate eclair one. Is it? Wait, the, the oh. strawberry shortcake and then the yeah, chocolate, the chocolate eclair. Yeah, right? yeah, that one was awesome. Yeah. Strawberry shortcake was was amazing. Oh, man. oh dude, if you gave me a hundred times, that, I'd get it probably ninety nine times out of a hundred. Damn, really? Yeah. And that's the only strawberry like treat that I like. Like you, you know, because they make these raspberry. Well, I guess that's not strawberry. So you know what? I rest my case. Mm. I wouldn't buy those anymore. Oh, we have strawberry flavored popsicles quite a bit at our house. Yeah, uh, that strawberry shortcake was on another level. man. It was. Everything about it was great. Yeah. I mean, and I would go back and forth with that and the creamsicle because I love that. And that's why the poor Choco Taco never got any love, even though it's really good. Well, rest in peace, Choco Taco. <laughs> Man. So 1984 to 2022. It was a good Gosh, run. That's sad. Yeah, it was. 38 years. It'll come back, I'm sure. Probably. Oh, <laughs> man. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily, like, you know, start crying over it. I am. I, I, there's a tear in my my, my my stomach actually over this. Uh, so you know the Colts owner Jim Irsay. Not only is he an owner of the uh, the football team, but I, I, we've talked about it from time to time. But I always forget he's a massive collector of any kind of pop culture memorabilia. And the most recent thing that he spent money on six point one eight million dollars, the oh. WC WBC belt that Muhammad Ali had when he oh. beat George Foreman. Wow! At the Rumble in the Jungle. How cool is that? That now he owns that. And he's trying to create, like, a giant museum. So, like, apparently his goal is to have, like, a, a place where it has, like, rock music history, American history, pop culture oh, artifacts. Oh, yeah. I wish that he could get that done because I don't know where one is that <laughs> is sort of a pop culture museum that you could put all that stuff in. Never heard yeah. of one. Never heard of, a, you know, a no. museum of pop culture stuff that he could put. <laughs> yeah, he, he better get that done. Dude, with. he's got some cool stuff. Most recently, he's got James Brown's robe. He has Jerry Garcia's guitar, Janis Joplin's guitar, Ringo Starr's drums. I love this one. He has Les Paul's Les Paul. Oh, wow. oh that's neat. That's yeah, cool. right? A bat used by Jackie Robinson, George Harrison's guitar. We, we talked about how he recently got Kurt Cobain's guitar. Also, and I'm very excited about this one, going back to Rocky, Sylvester Stallone's handwritten script for the first Rocky movie. Wow. He, I mean, it really does sound like he needs to do like a Mo Pop South. Yes. You know, maybe get together with uh, the folks that run, you know, the Museum of Pop Culture. And, and they could trade and, stuff. Ex- you, that's what I was thinking, brother. Great minds. Yes. Every once in a while, I think alike. <laughs> oh, we have a thing, quick update about the Dead Sea and yes. farting in it. Someone said the Dead Sea is no joke. I once pooped in it when I lived in Jordan. Oh. Salty water filled the void and it burned from Eric and Yelm. Why would you poop in the Dead Sea? I mean, I did. Yeah, when you got to go. <laughs> wow. I have never, I mean, wow. No, you're probably I, right. I, I, there was probably no, like, porta potties around. Wow. You know what? I'll show you. Uh, wow. I guess, I mean, when you think about it, you're like, look, I got to go. Might as well go here. because Someone's I, dad is just like, go out in the water and go. Yeah. and Dad, when, it and, burns. And, and the water will wash you, supposedly, yeah. Well, that's a lesson learned. Don't ever poop in the sea again, son. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, another update now about ice cream and strawberry ice cream. Ben and Jerry's apparently going to be doing a series called Topped, and the strawberry one tastes just like those strawberry shortcake ice, shortcake ice cream bars. Oh, I, I, I find that hard to believe, but I am willing to try. All right, we've got great news. It's starting all over again. I always heard... That you have to ignore the the next three games after an All Star break. They don't matter. Oh, you already heard. You, you've heard. I've that always heard that with baseball. And oh, it's okay. Really? <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're basically preseason games. Oh yeah, 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 yeah They're yeah. warm ups. They don't matter. Yeah, they don't matter. Forget at all about them. The whole record. Forget about them. Big win last night. The Mariners win four to three. How about Ty France? His three hits, including a big home run as well. Back on their winning ways, BJ. Yeah. And tonight. Could we see the return of the J-Rod show? Rumor has it that he'll be making his return tonight, That at least according to some of the reporters. We'll find out for sure, of course, when they take on the Texas Rangers uh, again tonight over at T-Mobile Park. Yeah, I, I hope he's feeling good. I really, I mean, we need that. We need that kid to go all the way, so I would like let, let him nur- let him nurture that wrist because yep. the, the wrist is no joke. Rest that wrist. Yeah. That should be... <laughs> Something. Yeah, Something. don't I, poop uh, in the that, Dead Sea. Yeah, and rest that and wrist. rest that wrist. <laughs> I mean, that is good advice for all ages. <laughs> hey, uh, weather, it's going to be chilly again. What? I hate to break it to you guys. Oh, dang, really? Yep, 92 degrees and sunny. <laughs> Oof. 
I even got like the call from my Ooh. garbage people last night. You know, you get that call like, "Hey, make sure your garbage is out earlier than usual because we're starting our uh, our our route like an hour earlier just so we could not be in the sun." Yeah. Good oh call. wow, you got your garbage people called you about that? Oh yeah, they call, they email, they do all the stuff. Wow. Uh, I I don't think my garbage people have even acknowledged me. Well, maybe you need to be nicer to your garbage people. Yeah. You know, we have a good communication uh, between me I and mean, Murray. I feel like, you oh, know, I mean, Murray. how, yeah. how nice Murray do you disposal. have to be to the, how nice do you have to be to them? You put your garbage out and, and you, and you make it so they can get it. Is, I mean, or do you go out and have a conversation with them? No, I think it's just a thing that they do, really. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's, it, was a, it was a robot that called me. And it said, hey, you better put your garbage out or we're going to break your fingers. Oh, no. Oh, now I see why you're complying. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks to Kia Puyall for giving us a major report, and that's what's up. Yesterday, Steve did get this one wrong. Dover is the capital of which state? Maryland. No. Uh, Massachusetts. No. Oh. Uh, ben. No. I get it. Bedova. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rev is going to continue to ask that question until never, because you're never going to get it right. I, I obviously right now have no idea. Yeah. Uh, ben knows that you got to go to Delaware if you want to bend over. All right. Uh, you want to shot the BDC, you got it. 206-421-ROCK. We'll play Beat Migs at 647 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. What's the difference between filing for bankruptcy and credit counseling? Uh, credit counseling is a is a useful process in some circumstances, but it does show up on your credit. In fact, from a credit scoring standpoint, credit counseling shows up just like a bankruptcy, so it's going to affect your credit as negatively as filing bankruptcy. In credit counseling, the idea is, is that a credit counselor works with your creditors on your behalf to try to lower interest rates or work out payment plans with your creditors uh, to, to pay back your debt over time. Uh, in credit counseling, you almost always pay back 100% of the debt, sometimes at lower interest. And of course, some creditors will participate in that process and some won't. Uh, so you're usually left with kind of a mixed uh, result with credit counseling and of course, a high payment. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. This Labor Day weekend is going to be huge, man. Three big days of music, and you can be part of all of it. You can see Allison Chains, Bush, bunch of other great bands breaking benjamin aaron jones all on the saturday wide only in the wreckage sunday you got uh queen Drake's gonna be there sammy hagar is gonna be a blast and then we start things off on the friday of labor day weekend bj with incubus and sublime with rome oh yeah there's a bonus show i mean if you really want to be involved in it wednesday august 31st you got the pretty reckless aaron jones that's gonna be at the moore theater so i mean really four days are you insane but yes you are because you're loving this music and then get a break from all the craziness and hang out with us well actually it'll be a different kind of craziness as yeah. we have the BJ and Migs party and that's um, selling quick so get those tickets before they sell out and it's also going to feature on both nights or both days Friday and Saturday the first ever BJ and Migs weenie toss well there you have it everybody gets a t-shirt People, everybody gets a drink for free. You get hooked up with uh, some food as well. Not the food we're throwing around, but actual food to eat. And some great times. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, that's what this is. We're tossing weenies at the BJ and Migs party. Yeah. Tickets on sale at Ticketmaster. More info about all of it at KISW.com. Let's play B Migs. Tuesday. 
Tuesday. Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Oh, okay. So let's turn down for Julio Gulio. Turns out for what? Swing hammered on its way out to left field. Julio going deep. Now, are we going to see him go deep tonight? I mean, this is the perfect day for him to return. Right. The service says there's a chance of it happening, and why not on Julio Gulio Day? Right. Yeah, the return of the Gulio. Oh, the Gulio is back. <laughs> so here's hoping he comes back, and here's hoping that the, Mar- the Mariners win tonight. And so, yeah, they're not playing the Astros, right? No, thankfully. Okay, good, good, We've good. Moved on. So the saying there's a Rangers. chance. Yes. <laughs> Let's get to our contestant today. We got Chris in Linwood. Chris, are you there? Yes, sir. Excellent. All right, Steve, get out of here. No. no. Whoa. Oh, wait, yeah, you're right. You know it. Oh, Chris, yeah. right? Is his name? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, Chris, <laughs> you have a chance if you beat me at winning tickets to Pain in the Grass for Friday's show with Incubus and Sublime with yeah. Rome. And we'll hook you up with tickets to the BJ and Miggs party as well, where you'll get to witness the greatness that is the first ever BJ and Miggs weenie toss. You might get to participate. If you're Whoa. lucky. Yeah, if you're lucky. And then you can leave with the wiener toss trophy <laughs> if you win. <laughs> and leave with the wiener. <laughs> so yeah, you can get information, <laughs> tickets at KISW.com. The BJ and Miggs party, sponsored by The Advocate. All right, now, get out of here. Goodbye. For those playing at home, Chris will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Chris, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Let's do it. In the Green Lantern comic book series, what is the color used to represent willpower? Uh, pass. Which speed star voices Scarlet Overkill in the 2015 animated Minions? Uh, pass. Mars is the Roman god of what? Oh, bad, bad. Kate Beckinsale played a vampire in what series of movies? No. Oh. Oh, he's, Underworld. Oh. Yes. Woo, what job, does babe. the first D stand for in the media format DVD? Digital? Yes. In which European country was Jason Statham born? England? Yes. The social network MySpace came out in what early 2000s year? 2002? No. Three? Yes. Who was the father of Michael Jackson? Oh, oh, crap. Um, Mr. Jackson. No. Pass. <laughs> Which American president appears on the $1 bill? George Washington. Yes. What breed of dog is Snoopy? Beagle. Yes. In the Green Lantern comic book series, what color is used to represent willpower? Pink? No. I don't know. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six. Correct. I knew yellow wasn't it because that's his. Yeah. That's yeah. like what he's yeah. like. Immune yeah. to, not immune to, but you yeah, know what I mean. it's 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 the it's, reverse. it's the, it's the best. Well, well, Steve, you're back. Um, I sure, am. Uh, Chris left. Yeah. Where did he go? Uh, he left after the fourth question, to which he had no answer to. Oh. Yes. So yeah, he peaced out. Yep. Vicky came in and uh, gave you at least a running shot, so you don't just have a cakewalk here, sir. Well, in all fairness, it's hot out. Maybe his phone melted. Oh, hey. true. Yeah. Yes, yes. And it's already seventy degrees outside. Are you? Se- oh yeah, look at that. Wow. Yeah. Damn. I know. Well, good luck, everybody out there without AC. You're gonna <laughs> says the guy with AC. Hell yeah. Are you ready? Danny wants to punch you. Yeah, I'm going to throw something at him in a second here. Oh, yes! In the Green Lantern comic book series, what is the color used to represent willpower? Green? Yes. Which <laughs> which speed star voices Scarlet Overkill in 2015's animated Minions? Sandra Bullock. Yes. Mars is the Roman god of what? Chocolate. No. <laughs> War? Yes. Nice. Kate Beckinsale played a vampire in what series of movies? Underworld. Yes. What does the first D stand for in the media format DVD? Digital. Yes. In which European country was Jason Statham born? England. Yes. Nice. The social network MySpace came out in what early 2000s year? 2002. No. 2001. No. 2000. No. Give it 2003. Mm-hmm. Who was the father of Michael Jackson? Jermaine. No, not Jermaine. Joe Jackson. <laughs> yes. Which American president appears on the $1 bill? Uh, Washington. Yes. What breed of dog is Snoopy? He's a beagle. Yes. And Steve, you win. And it's nice. Six to nine. Nice. I mean, you beat Vicky six to nine because yeah. Chris didn't get any. He didn't get any. None. Nice. Five. He got, I asked him the fourth question, and he hung up. Yeah, yeah, it. Screw it. Yeah. He, done. he had zero at that point. So I quit this bitch. Yep. Try to get some Yep. Solid outing. Yeah, I got a nice score right there.
I totally overthought it on the Green Lantern one. Yeah, Everyone did. Yeah, you yeah. got to remember. Real? Yeah. I almost asked Chris you. just passed. He didn't even guess yeah. three colors. I yeah. almost asked you, though. I was going to say, is it green? But then Steve walked in, and I yeah. was like... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, if you would have just been, like, real quick, I'd be like, yeah, yeah. I mean, really I was like, that was the first thing, like, eh, green? I thought you were going to be like, no, you idiot. It's the it's the Ken Jennings way, because how would anybody know that? I mean, there aren't, like, it's not like everybody in the world's a Green Lantern comic fan that They deep. should be. But the Ken Jennings way is, wait a minute, this is a ridiculous question. Maybe the answer is in the question. And yep. it was. But I'm a nerd and I knew there's a million colors. Yeah, so Vicky, Vicky even went with pink. I would overthought it. It means love, apparently, Aww. in the uh, Green Lantern Corp. So. What does blue mean? Uh, there's like a purpley blue and a light blue. There's hope and compassion. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, the compassion, the little blue pill, you know, like that. Mm. Uh, the only one that you did miss was the social network MySpace, and you figured that out in 2003. 2003. So um, congratulations on your win with nine correct. So said so that dude rage quit. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, so caller done. nine gets the pain in the grass yes. tickets, BJ. Yeah, that's a, that. see that? It could have been caller six, but Steve, you played for number nine. Damn straight. Oh, he says he lost service. He texted in. Oh, he didn't rage quit. Oh, Look at sure. you guys just jump into conclusions. That sounded more like a it's rage It's a better quit. story. I, mean, I, mean, I followed I'm up not, and said, thanks. I appreciate you guys are awesome. I love no, listening every morning. You guys no. are douches. Oh, no, I don't want <laughs> nice that guy. story. The, the, the better story for drama, if this was like the Real Housewives of KISW, it's a rage quit. You know, Real Housewives gonna, of KISW? Yeah, we, we, we're not going to have them have a peaceful ending with that. No, I mean, yeah, come on. I don't know, whatever you want to fit your narrative, BJ. Oh, that's right, buddy. That's right. It's all about the narrative. Mm. Well, sorry uh, you got disconnected, buddy. Uh, you know, try again next time, and hopefully you won't be in bad self-service. See, my assumption was even closer that his phone melted. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot uh, That's a lot closer to the truth. You're right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, hey, you guys know JoJo Siwa? Because I don't know who JoJo Siwa She's is. She's like a kid star. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know anything else other than that. She's, she used to be... she starring Bluey or Peppa Pig? No. What did she do? No, otherwise I would know everything about her. Oh, okay. Lily was her biggest fan until about last year. What, she just got too old for that crap? Yeah, she was like, wow, she's a terrible singer, Dad. And I was like, oh, oh now that she's taking singing lessons, yeah, look at her. She's, oh, she's ready. She, she's wow. moved on to the Taylor Swift's and the Katy Perry's, no longer the JoJo Siwa's. Well, JoJo Siwa was very, like, bubblegum pop, even as she became, like, 18 years old. And she just, she was very well known for, like, this giant bows and the big mm -hmm. ponytails. YouTube star. Oh, yeah. that kid. And Dance Moms, oh. I believe. Oh, yeah. She's on one of those. Okay. Oh, I know that kid. I didn't, and and I didn't know that was JoJo Siwa. I, re I, I remember seeing that that kid oh, yeah. all right so she recently like within the last year she came out she chopped her you know signature hair off and a lot of, like she's growing up so people were upset with her how dare she no They're longer because she's no longer. growing up right yeah, I, mean, I don't know how to tell you this but that happens There's no, no longer you know, it deals with nickelodeon <laughs> like no. yeah, yeah, yeah i mean yeah, oh. you don't like it then just you know watch barney what do you want from people <laughs> I mean, uh watch barney has been yeah, called barney's everybody. Not everybody. Woo! <laughs> people get all worked up over the dumb things. Well, people do. And that's we, true. We, you know, when stuff goes away, people don't like it. But, I mean, that's just what happens. And also, people will age out of their whatever roles they were in. Yes. I mean, that's just, that, especially if you're a child star, as the, anyone who's a child star knows, they bring in the cute kid because you're no longer the child star anymore. That's just, unfortunately, that happens. That two and a half, two and a half man kid, boy, he was, a, he really was a lot less entertaining the older he got. So what's going on with JoJo Siwa? Are we just, uh, just today the JoJo Siwa appreciation show? <laughs> yes. Um, she did a TikTok video, and uh, <laughs> I will give her credit for this. She was asked questions. You know, on Reddit, they do AMAs all the time. Well, they did this on TikTok, and rather than answer the questions, she just flashed a picture on her cell phone to answer the questions. And uh, I saw the video, and she flashes it so fast that you can't see the answer unless, like, you're pausing it on your cell phone. So it's like, you know, like, kind of like a quick flash thing. So you have to really, like, take a second to, like, rewind it or skip back and then pause it so you can see what, what the picture was. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm saying, Vicky's showing me the video now, and... I, you know, she looks like a you know, she looks like a fun kid. I really, people giving her a hard time. I mean, she's just like a fun kid growing up. And uh, that's, uh, you're right, Steve. Why do people go so crazy over this crap? Um, so they asked her, "Who's your celebrity crush?" And JoJo picture showed a picture of Zendaya, who is uh, she played Mary Jane in the Spider Man movies. I know her. Oh yeah. Uh, so she was asked, "Who's the nicest celebrity?" And she flashed a picture of Miley Cyrus. But the big, the big one, and this is going to hurt a lot of you old school fans. She was uh, who was the rudest celebrity that you have ever met? Okay, I'm glad it better not be Miley Cyrus because uh, no, right uh, that would be my she, answer to both of those. Oh, who's who's the nicest and rudest? You would be like, no, who's my celebrity crush and who is the nicest? Uh, I hope celebrity. Oh, okay. I'm a big fan of Miley. 
Yeah, Zendaya was the crush, but the rudest the rudest celebrity was Candace Cameron Bure. Mm-hmm. Bure. Oh wow! I didn't even know. I, I thank you, sir. Thank you. I didn't even know that's how you say her name. Come on, man. Get with, get with Full House. Yeah, uh, Candace Cameron of Full House was rude to her for some reason. Hmm. Uh, don't know why. Don't know if she caught Candace on a bad day. Um, Who would you say is the rudest celebrity that you ever met? Ooh, boy! You know the, the uh, was it Russell Simmons? Was he the guy that never looked at us while? Oh he was yeah, in he studio? was on the phone while literally while you guys were talking. Yeah, I feel like he <laughs> wasn't on the phone during the interview. Like like yeah, no, he was talking. He was in else. the studio oh, yeah. on the phone. Yeah, 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 like texting people while talking. Yeah, he wasn't. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't in even studio. look at me when asking the questions. And I just. You know, I would have liked an explanation because who knows if he's nervous? Who knows if the, he has a hard time looking? I don't know anything about Russell Simmons, but it's the first time in my career where I am l- literally interviewing a guy in my studio and he won't look at me ever. And he, and like you said, he was on his phone answering texts. And I just thought, you know, uh, it, it, I just felt See, like that was super rude. I, I get that. I, I actually had a good time with I thought he was really nice. Yeah. <laughs> like, I enjoyed Russell Simmons. I mean, because I'm a fan, and I just kind of, like, accepted that he was on his phone. And I'm like, oh, he's a mover and a shaker. The dude's worth, like, a half a million or half a billion dollars or whatever it is. He's probably got a lot of things going on. But I think that if that were any of my, anybody that you weren't a fan of, you'd be pissed. Probably. Was he coming yeah. off, like, uh, like, uninterested? You know, I'd have to go back and listen. I didn't get the vibe that he... I, I got the vibe that he was there with us. Yeah, because if he's answering the questions and answering them in full, like, what's the problem? <laughs> like, well, I, I, you're, I not, you, no, you're not I used it. to somebody just looking at their phone during an interview well, and texting. Yeah, I, like, it wasn't I like he was scrolling you, through, like, pictures of There's no such thing as multitasking, and they've come out and found that out, which means he is not paying 100% attention to the interview. It's, you, you just can't do that. I know it's a, it's a fallacy to say you can multitask. What you do is you do one task, then go back, and the other one, you bounce back and forth, but you're not doing both at the same time. And that's what frustrates me because I know about this and I really was offended. Like, dude, you're not giving me 100% of your attention and I am giving you 100% of my attention. It was so crazy. I took my shirt off and he didn't even notice. <laughs> and that was the part of it because I, was very, I, yeah. I did notice and that made it even worse because I couldn't finish my breakfast. Oh. I have two that I could think of. All right. Who do you, who do you got? For okay. My rudest? first one, it was early in my radio career, is Brian Setzer. And it wasn't Ooh. rude to me. But he was rude to the guy that my buddy Tony, who was also worked on the end, that Tony Marigi was an awesome dude. He oh, was wow, a, yeah. And he was a big Stray Cats fan. So yeah, there Brian you go. Setzer and the Brian Setzer Orchestra came in, which was awesome, because they brought the entire band and they had to like line them out the hallway because it's a giant orchestra. They had guys in the conference room, guys down the hall, and all microphones everywhere, and they did a live performance. It was pretty fun to watch that all unfold. But then afterwards, he was taking some pictures. And like he wasn't like the nicest or friendliest guy, but he was whatever. And then Tony had a couple of Stray Cats records that he was hoping to get signed because he was a big Stray Cats fan. And, of course, Brian made his career originally with the Stray Cats, which was a great band. So he pulled them out, and there was like two records he wanted to sign. And he signed the first one, and then the second one, he just kind of... It was like he was mumbling it under his breath, but not mumbling it under his breath because we heard him just fine. He's like, so the million records of uh, Brian Setzer Orchestra, and this guy only wants a Stray Cat record signed. And I'm like, well, chill the F out, buddy. Like, he was annoyed <laughs> that wow. that he wasn't getting a Brian Setzer Orchestra record signed. I find that to be equal or even less than Russell Simmons. Okay, and then the other one, and it, I don't have a full, like, I can't, like, it was just a vibe. It wasn't so much what she said, but how she was until the microphones were turned out. I was doing an Anchorman radio oh. thing and I was getting to interview all the people at a hotel in California Will Farrell was awesome uh, what's his face Paul Rudd yeah. that guy oh, was the coolest dude yeah he seems like he'd be amazing Kackner no surprise awesome as well yeah. Steve Carell is super nice nothing like he wasn't like over the top nice but he was very nice Will Farrell was like offering me water like and then I'm like Christina Applegate this <laughs> is gonna be awesome like you know grew up being a fan of Married with Children this is gonna be a blast and she seemed like she was great in the movie and she wouldn't even look at you oh, wow. until the mics were on. And then oh, she wow. was like the nicest interview. But before the interview, you couldn't even have any sense of small talk. Like, hey, how are you doing? I really enjoyed the movie. Okay. And oh. it just, just kind of looked away like, like this was just a chore. And then the mic was on 
And then she performed, you know, hey, she gave a decent interview, but it See, was still like, oh. You found that worse than Russell Simmons? Well, like I said, I can't really explain it because it wasn't any kind of verbal thing. It was just a vibe. Like, you could, you could just tell she was annoyed to even be there. I felt that way that Russell Simmons was like he didn't want to be there either, but he just knew he had to be there because he wanted the promotion. Because I'm with you. I think that's kind of lame when they don't engage at all, even, you know, even slightly off. Right. Uh, but at least she, at least she gave a good performance, like you said. Russell, I just was like, man, dude, you're not even looking at me and you're on your phone doing stuff. That is just, I mean, I, I, you know me, Steve, in the past, I, I think I was cordial to the guy, but you, you know how I, yeah, but I, you know how I was in the past, but I was in the middle of therapy, so I was trying to be you better know, yeah. than that. I used to be. You should have asked for his cell phone number and say, I'll text you my questions, and then you can answer him that way. <laughs> oh, you clearly are more involved. Oh, dude, good. that would have been that a great would've, line. Would've been I, so I, you good. know, that would have been, that would have been a line I would have entertained early in my career uh but i thought you know what i'm gonna try to be cool this guy's doing what he's doing and i'm just gonna get this interview over with uh, but i never have him back if somebody said you want russell simmons on again i would say no never want that guy back in the studio you know if that's how he does it without any explanation then you know let someone else interview him so i said don't worry it looks like you came out okay in that whole situation and apparently fled to bali back in 2017 after being accused of some stuff by multiple women i don't know if that's true but that was a text this now Russell Simmons. Really? Oh, I wow. Oh, so well, maybe you I, won't be able to get him back. Oh you? well, I, I I don't know that about that, but I just know that in my own personal experience, yeah, don't I, I don't need to have him back. Uh, we, uh, you know, I I just think, come on, dude. You, 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 no matter what you got going on, you you got to look, Pete. You got to you know, you got to be there for people. You can't just be that guy. Danny, Rev, Vicky, do you guys have anyone that? <laughs> I do, um, but I I don't want to say the person's name because they were local for a while. Ah, screw him. Uh, screw him? <laughs> yeah, I'll show you who it was. Well, we've said names. I mean, uh, I don't, I mean, I, I feel like. Oh! Can we say that name, Steve? A certain local news personality. Yeah, they're oh, not a news the, personality locally the anymore. Name. They're oh. not even a oh, news I person would, anymore. They're I would in real say estate, that. So. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I would definitely say it, Vicky. I mean, uh, you know, if you have your own reasons and. <laughs> and I want to know why. Yeah. I mean. So, f- first I year. Love, I love this stuff. <laughs> First year, I started working here. I originally wanted to get into being like a news anchor, TV news anchor, and I realized radio is more my speed. But I had this whole station, uh, this TV station was my inspiration. Like, I'd watch them every morning. I was super excited. And I got a chance to meet her at one of, like, the Foul Balls games. Mm -hmm. And I went up to her, and she, like, seemed really nice at first. I'm like, hey, I just want to say, you know, I'm worth the radio station, and I really love what you do. You've been a really big inspiration for me. And her smile changed. And she did one of those where she just stopped looking at me. And she's like, "Uh uh-huh. And immediately, no. the second she found out I'm not just a fan, like, I guess, like a regular fan. But you fan, were a fan. But I was. So, like, but her demeanor changed. She was super cold, didn't look at me, didn't talk to me. She just didn't care anymore. I think she thought I was an intern. I don't know. But she was just awful. And it, like, Probably really, thought you were going to hit her up for a job. Or yeah. something. Like, but, or an like, internship. Even, or I was crushed. Still. Or a date. Yeah. Even, right. <laughs> even still, why would you treat somebody that way? Especially if they are like trying to get into the business. I mean, it's so hard. Oh, uh, it was twenty I, year uh, old me, and I was crushed. I was like, I, I mean, you need was, mentors. Like, I idolized and, her. And, yeah, I, I, she was nice to you. Maybe you would have went on and done great things and said you're stuck with us. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Sad. she hurt you yeah. in many different ways. Yeah, so we're not going to say the name. We've decided if we're you're not, not gonna comfortable saying the name. Yeah. Don't say the name. Yeah, I worry I'm comfortable that, like, saying the name. She's gonna find out. She's gonna look for me, and she's gonna be like, "You bitch." Yeah, she takes me down. I don't know. Yeah. I, well, you know, it's an interesting thing, Vic. I, I feel like if somebody treats you that way, they don't deserve to have their name, you know, uh, hi, you know, hidden. But all right, it, like Steve said, it is your call. If only uh, you would have said hi to Margaret Larson, this yeah. would have been different. Ah, Margaret ah, is ah, the coolest ah, person ah. in the world. Margaret Larson's awesome. I agree. Seriously, uh, she really, really is. And, uh, you know, somebody who achieved what she achieved in her career and would still, like, mess with people like us, Steve. You know what I mean? It's, it blows my mind going, wait, Margaret Larson wants to come on, wants us to come on her show? Okay. Well, I mean, you know, that's just, uh, you know, but yeah, fantastic. All and right. definitely, uh, in my opinion, achieved a lot more than the person Vicky's talking about. Well, yeah, she Yeah, achieved a lot more than the that person, person Vicky's talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. Danny. 
The only one that I can think of, and it was it was my own fault, was the guys from All American Rejects. Oh, yeah, because you kept calling them by the wrong. I band. called them by the wrong name, and the yeah, guy wanted. You, I mean, he wanted to punch me by the end of it. But beyond that, like I can't really think of. That was like the only negative interaction I've had with somebody. I love how dating was. These people were rude because I wouldn't call them by their same. Oh no, no! I, right. Once again, I fully take responsibility. Yeah. But that was the only negative interaction. Honest I've to God, had I really feel like I'm going to. Russell Simmons still wins, if you ask me. I mean, although, yeah. though Vicky's person is also pretty bad. That'd be like me being bugging like uh, Everlast. And saying he was a jerk because he was super nice until I kept bugging him trying to get him to play one more song on the radio with us. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, man. Come on, you be playing one more. I already said I'm only going to do one song. And I'm like, Jeez. okay. <laughs> dude, I was. <laughs> now, Steve. <laughs> I was like, come on, play, come play on, one dude, more song from the record. I'm a big fan. Yeah. He's like, I'm, this is not a personal concert. Yeah, thank you, I Chris said Farley. I'd do one song. I did the one song. Yeah. Chill the F out, kid. <laughs> I can't blame him. Uh, Steve, I have a question, though. Could anybody possibly be rude to the Rev? I mean, when you figure it's Rev. Oh, I think I know who it might be. Oh, me too, oh, actually. Oh, who do you guys think it oh, is? I wow. think things took a turn for the worse when you drew this person as bacon. Oh, oh yeah. Alice Eve? Yes. Yeah. yeah, she had just the RBF that was kind of off-putting. Like, it was just one of those things where it's like, I made this. Like, I made this wonderful picture of you I, with a head of bacon. I drew you like you were bacon. Yeah. Why aren't you accepting this? <laughs> and maybe yeah, maybe, maybe she's like vegetarian or something. Maybe she just didn't understand it because she was British. It's weird. Maybe I mean, she thought you were a serial yeah. killer and this is like yeah. you like every Every yeah. other person... Ever like, and I've done this multiple times with a bunch of people. Everyone have always been like, at least like patronizing, but like at least I didn't notice it. She just was like stone cold, like, oh, I guess I'll sign there, it. You know, there are people, and I and you you illustrated Steve Christina Applegate. There are people that don't know how to perform like around people to be nice yeah, uh, or on an interview. And so it shocks me how many people that we have that are celebrities that are actors who do a horrible interview or interact like Rev says. Uh, and Alice Eve, yeah, that was, I don't know if she had a cold or what was going on, but yeah, she really did not come off as enthusiastic to, of being in the studio the way Simon Pegg and John Cho uh, <laughs> loved, I forget who it was. Was you, Steve, that said Frown Town? No, John it was Tr you. Oh, it, oh, yeah, it was well, you who uh, said Frown Town and and then he's just John, John Cho started Cho singing. John was it. like, "This is the greatest phrase I've ever heard." Yeah, uh, of yeah. course. Simon Pegg, as we've said, is a good buddy of the show, Steve, because I've got him on dog. Yeah, yeah BFF. Give him a foot long. So you know, I mean, <laughs> having those guys in studio for the Star Trek movie, I thought would be fantastic. And you could even see on on Simon's face, he was sort of looking at Alice like, "Can you please be nice to these Do folks?" Do we know if she's vegan or vegetarian no, yeah, or any of those know. things? Because yeah. like maybe like she does have like a serious issue with like cruelty to animals, and here's somebody who drew her as dead pig. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, look, I'm going to say this: <laughs> I'm a geek, but if you're a regular person, like you're not super geeky. I mean, getting yourself drawn just, as bacon is definitely well, like, what and, the heck is going on and I, here? I, I just, I literally, I just looked online. It was just a quick Google search of Alice E. Vegetarian. But apparently during that whole Star Trek time, in order to lose weight, she embarked on a diet consisting of almost entirely of just spinach for five months. Oh my it. God! That's what she so, had to do to be in that movie. So maybe, oh maybe she gosh. was like, "I'm not dealing with bacon. I've just been eating spinach." Like, or she was hangry because all she's been eating is spinach, and here's I this grew, guy yeah. drawing her. Now she's like conflicted because she kind of wants to eat herself. I think you're right, Steve. I think <laughs> if I want spinach, you know what? I take it all back. I mean, if Alice Eve came in our studio and didn't kill us because that's all she had was a spinach diet, I, you know what? I bow to her. That is a horrible diet to have to endure just to do your job. Wow. All right. Well, I, t I take it all back. Yeah, I take it back on her, too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All we'll right. draw her as spinach and tweet it at her. <laughs> How funny would that be? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. She probably would have She probably would have gone ballistic. Sorry, I didn't know here is you as spinach. We got a pizza delivery guy that made a half of a million dollars all because of what he did one day on the job. And you're going to hear from him at 717 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There's a 25-year-old pizza delivery dude. His name is Nicholas, and he's been given over $500,000 in online donations after saving four children and an 18-year-old from a burning house in Indiana. And here's Nicholas talking about all this. 
The heat scared me, and the whole situation scared me. It was adrenaline. I hightailed my butt into the house through the backup door, found Kaylani in the smoke, continued upstairs, collapsed at the top stairs, and then went to jump out the window, but her leg got wrapped up around the curtain. And so I finished up busting the window out after I got it unwrapped, and then we jumped out. I'm ready to go play some football. I'm ready to go drift. Whatever. Let's go, baby. <laughs> I love this guy. Wow. Extreme Chad. Wait, wait, isn't drifting where, like, you like, is that like the, the car thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tokyo Drift. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. He's going to be able to buy a nice car with that kind of money to go drifting. Can, yeah. Can you imagine yeah. how, like, on top of the world he'd be feeling, though? Like, I get that 100%. Oh, definitely. Dude. You just see people. Sadly, he got fired because he didn't get someone their pizza in 30 minutes or less. <laughs> but other than that. I'm kidding. Actually, the pizza was Please. just burnt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please don't be true, That I is, just really I hard. mean, and so how about, <laughs> yeah, folks, uh, you know, set up an online donation situation. $500,000 this kid has. and I wouldn't be surprised I, if it's more now. You know, those GoFundMes, once they start spreading virally and people see the story, like, you want to make, you want to reward this kid for doing something so awesome like that because, he, yeah. dude, four children's lives were saved and then also an 18-year-old. That is, uh, that's amazing. Uh, and it just goes to show you, man, the type, the different types of people there are. Cause I, I would be traumatized by that, but Nicholas just, like you said, seems so fired up. Well, he's, you know, he's a man that lives on the edge. He likes to drift. <laughs> yeah. Okay, You're right. It's going to work well with his pizza delivery job if he's drifting around. <laughs> hey, as long as my pizza gets here, I don't care how he drives his car. <laughs> $562,000 now. Good All for right. him. Yeah. Man, uh, boy, Nicholas, I hope you're able to put that into some situation where it can take care of you for the rest of your life. Because yeah, that, that's, a, that's a cool thing that, I mean, he's I mean, saving lives like that where he's, he doesn't have to. He's not a fire person, you know, trained is amazing. And I just love after the fact. <laughs> what do you want to say? I want to go play some football and drift. Yeah, that is <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> it's the lukewarm topic of the day. So, how about this pizza delivery guy gets five hundred thousand dollars in online do- online donations, and I mean for good reason. He saved four children and an eighteen year old from a burning house in Indiana. And you know, usually people like you know after they do something amazing, like like win a Super Bowl, they want to go to Disney World or something. This guy goes, "I'm ready to go play football and drift with the money." So based on this, we want to know, uh, what is the first thing that you would do if you got a large sum of money? 206-421-ROCK, Texas at 77999. What's the first thing you'd do if you got a large sum of money? We'll take your calls. We'll take your texts after three days grace on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. A 25-year-old pizza delivery guy, uh, his name is Nicholas. He's got over $500,000 raised in online donations. Why? Oh, all he did was save four children and an 18-year-old from a burning house in Indiana. Oh, so yeah. not much. That's it. Uh, <laughs> but, and, but what I love about Nicholas is that with the cash, he's just like, you know what I'm ready to do? I'm ready to go play football and drift with that drift. cash. <laughs> Uh, so we're thinking, okay, based on Nicholas and the awesome things he wants to do, what is the first thing you would do if you got a large sum of money? 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Uh, it's a break this year, BJ, but apparently the rock caught wind of what this kid did. He's going to put him in the next uh, Fast and the Furious movie. Is that really true? No. Okay. I just wanted to see if you, how you'd react. To it. I, had to, I had to ask just because, you know, I mean. But doesn't that sound like something that The Rock would do? Yes. Wouldn't it be funny if he did now? Oh, yeah. we need to make that happen. I think BJ uh, almost threw something for a second. I really did. Real I, he was I, conflicted. I, I, I was like, this friggin' Rock, does he have to be involved in everything? Oh, yeah. that would be amazing. Someone said I would uh, pay The Rock to do another nice thing just to piss BJ off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, uh, the, the Rock is killing me. The Rock is killing me. But it has nothing to do with The Rock. He's truly killing you with kindness. He really is. He's killing me with kindness and his, uh, yeah. And his, <laughs> and his humble bragging. But that's, this isn't about The Rock. This Fair. is about Nicholas and about what people would do if they got a large sum of money. Cause Nicholas, after, you know, realizing what I'm getting 500,000 or more because I was cool, I'm going to go play football and do some drifting is what I'm going to do. So I said, Hey, this is Jay. I love the show. I got a large sum of money. I would buy an engagement ring and a wedding venue for my beautiful girlfriend. Aww. Wow. 
won't. So oh, what's he saying? Until that happens, they're not getting married? Is that like his excuse? <laughs> <laughs> okay, until, until I get a half a million dollars yeah, gifted I to mean, me via GoFundMe, yeah, I love we're you. never getting married. Sorry. Damn. I mean, you know I'd like to, but, you know, I just need to find the right house with the right kids and the right cal- calamity. Speaking of people getting married, I see your daughter's in the room. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be for a great, great oh. wedding. You could get a lot of cool stuff for a half a million dollars there, Sarah. Yeah. In Vegas? BJ, I hope that that's your answer. If you got a lo- large sum of money, you spend it on me and my wedding, right? <sighs> <laughs> you probably yeah. have to. Well, that reaction is clearly a yes. <laughs> yeah, so, yes. of course. Whether yeah, he wants right. you or not. And then here comes Joey Dees, who's probably got some scheme he wants me to participate oh, in financially. Joey, like, Dad, I can double that money if you just give me 20 yeah. minutes with it. Yeah. Oh, it's, and it, that's a lie, probably. Uh, oh, no, Joey Dees has been doing some schemes lately. He's been doing a lot of reading about economy and how to make money. And so I'm just waiting for the day Joey Dees comes to me and says, Dad, I got this surefire get-rich-quick scheme. I'm like, oh, here we go. Well, and also, Sarah, before you answer, I'm just going to put this out there. BJ's back up to $12 million on his net worth. Nice. So he has that, he has that large sum of money. Okay. So go ahead. Woo, what, what are you going to do with it? I... I Woo, baby. I was down to 200000 last week. But now I'm back up to I'm 12 glad. mil. You made some Woo. smart decisions over yeah, the weekend, BJ. Thank you. you, buddy. Thank you. Thank I'm God. very, very torn. Okay, the responsible side of Sarah would finally move out of BJ's house oh, with stupid. my man and buy a house. Um, but then the other side of me would just get a really beautiful boob job. <laughs> Why? Let's nice. get real. There you go. <laughs> Are you, do for you. Are you I thinking f- silicone or like the fat, the liposuction where they take the fat out and they put it up into the boobs? Because I want to do that. That's what I would pick. Is that a thing? That's a thing. Yeah, they could lipo the fat. I out got of some you. good fat to donate to you guys. <laughs> yeah, 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 take yeah, it, take it out of my stomach. Some, yeah, yeah. I want some bi- some big ones. So I'll take all y'all's fat. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, well. But wow. yeah, I kind of feel like the boob job would have to come first because that's. I feel like I could get an appointment faster. The house, that might take some time. Right. So. Unless you want it before the wedding, I'm assuming. Absolutely. So okay. I don't have to tape them or get... Yeah. It's not as a crazy of a buyer's market right now. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> boobs oh, are always... Oh, boobs? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you been doing some yeah. research? I have. The interest rates have gone down. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. There's never been a better time than to buy yourself some boobs. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Just like time for the summertime. You know? I like the answer is not like, hey, I'd help my dad out, would get the money, oh, and no. I'd help so not pay, for, pay the for the wedding. It's, yeah, I would get no. new boots. No. I'd get my dad a new car after all these great years. But if I the- got the money, she would want me to pay for the wedding even more. And make oh, it absolutely. More. Yeah, this is this is just a lovely dream. Yeah, maybe gift me a nice honeymoon, too. <laughs> and, then, and then there was yeah. maybe move out of the house, but not really. Maybe. Probably yeah. not. Maybe, maybe temporarily. Not. They, they, they'd yeah. stay at like a hotel for a week. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. And then Give you some move time. Right back in. Mm-hmm. That's Mine, I'm torn. My first thought would be I'd, I'd get an RV, like one of those sweet RVs. Nice. Hire a driver yeah. so I don't have to worry even about driving or any of that crap. I can yeah. just hang on in the back with like Tatum and my wife and Lulu, and we just do an amusement park tour of the entire Ooh. country. That'd be fun. Like, just hit all the amusement parks. Nice. Oh, that'd be so much. Oh, I mean, Tatum can't ride all the rides. You know what? We we have this kind of money. We 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 close on the park for a day. So there you go. Then yes. we can legally have a ride all the ride. Oh, oh, oh I they're gonna say hire a Dude, nanny to hang yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, what oh, you're saying is cheaper. like safety stuff. Yeah, uh, there, yeah. yeah. Hire Driver nanny slash nanny. Steve. There you go. It's like I you don't want to see your kid getting launched out of a roller coaster <laughs> yeah, because there's a reason why, ride. Steve. You're not. I mean, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, it's well, a, I mean, uh, there's shades of gray, and I guess you know when you have like rules, there they can't really let them. They can't bend them but if i have the park to myself maybe they will yeah. they, but the, the rules are there for those oh, yeah i'm nice. like again all right yeah maybe, uh, I'm not, uh, yeah. maybe, maybe I'm not you shouldn't get any my money. parent cap on <laughs> yeah all right now how about this one a little bit less crazy i would want to get like a custom built pool for our backyard oh there you go because we don't have a huge backyard nice. but like a, a big enough pool to just kind of like you know just float in yeah <laughs> is it gonna be a face Oh. oh, please. I yeah. thought it was going to be Lulu's face. Or Lulu's face, yeah. I mean, we could, get, we could get a little creative with that, I guess, at the bottom of the pool. But I, I would love a pool in our backyard. That'd be awesome. That'd be so cool. Like an in-ground one, real yeah. fancy. I, I went online to check, and I'm like, yeah, that, that, that answered my dude, question. Not yeah. going to happen. That's so expensive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, are, what, are they, what do they cost, Steve? They I mean, dude, it? it looks like at minimum 50 grand, it seems oh. like. Just to have like a... Like, I could be wrong, but Whoa. this was a quick search just with all the material and all the... The, the 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 labor and that's not maintenance afterwards either right that's oh just, yeah. yeah 
and you know, like it's a custom size, so it's not like just like a stock pool. I was thinking just dig up the dirt, get like one of those Walmart pools, and just drop <laughs> it in there. Yeah, that's how you do it, like in Encino Man, <laughs> where he's he's doing the. Yeah, I mean, it's probably good yeah. for a year. And what then, could go wrong? We live in Seattle. It'll fill up with rain eventually. <laughs> What's the worst that'll happen? The water the worst drips happen, into the man. dirt. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Steve. But all right, so we're talking a large sum of money. So are we saying like 500 grand? Is that's that, what is I was that figuring. the yeah, I'm kind of okay. figuring that, Cause, yeah. Because that's, you know, it's, it's. I mean, it, it, it can be, uh, it, I don't know if it can be super life altering, depending upon if you want to take a chance and invest it somewhere. Um, I think I'm at the stage of my life where I probably would try to help people and people close to me, I think, with that kind of money. Yeah. You know, I mean, because I at my age, I kind of have everything I want. So you'd help your friend Steve get a pool. Nice. OK. Uh, yeah, I, said people, you, okay I, I said people close to me. So uh, well, like a couple of feet from your. Yeah. Well, yeah, I didn't mean proximity. I, yeah, that, that's I'm a different closest definition. closest person yes. here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're right. Proximity. But Closer really. Your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I feel well, like I... Okay, Steve, whoa, 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 hold on, hold See, on. now I'm Mr. Pragmatic. I would probably want to set up retirement accounts for my kids, you know, with some I'm of that in. money. Yes, oh. let's do it. I know, no. I know it's boring, but I feel like at my age, that would be, well, you know, every parent wants to take care of their kid, right? If I was your age, Steve, or younger, yeah, I would probably do something stupid, like get a, a crazy game room and, and trick out something like that. I'd probably do something like that. Well, Texas, I could get a Peppa Pig shape pool, BJ. That'd Come be on. cool. Ooh. Oh, I didn't realize that could happen. All right, well, and then have a George shaped uh, sauna. So yeah. it's Peppa yeah. and George. Who's so George? what you're saying it's is, uh, little is brother. That, yeah. If you on, win, man. okay, okay. So if you win, you would like a pool, and if I win, you would like a pool. So all right, well, you know what? Now that that's decided, yes. I mean, it makes it makes my life easier. I don't have. I can go to the family. And go look. I, <laughs> I I had no choice in this. Steve wants a pool. Hey, so instead, first thing I would do is contact a builder to convert my garage into a tabletop and video game room. The rest of it probably have to go to my wife for actual stuff, and I'll probably have to call Todd Peach for that. Mm. Good call. Yeah. Yeah, don't you? But you want to call Todd Peach after you convert your garage because if you do it yep. before, he's going to tell you not to convert your garage. <laughs> no, you, if you got five hundred grand, you call Todd Peach and go, "I got four hundred thousand dollars, and I don't know <laughs> yeah, what to do." What, with exactly. What do with this? Yeah. Oh uh, wow, you're pretty good because I would have said I have two hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, well, congratulations to all of you. You're not getting a thing from me. Right, hey, uh, what do you think was picked as the best opening scene to a movie of all time? Well, you know, I'm going to tell you, we'll do that at 747. Oh, and these guys, you can see these guys at Pain in the Grass. Get tickets and info at KISW.com. It's Sublime on the Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's another listener question. How do I rebuild my credit after filing bankruptcy? Uh, you rebuild it, you know, one creditor at a time by making your payments on time to, on your on your rent or your mortgage, by continuing to make car payments at, on a car that you keep during your case. Um, you can also, as I said, uh, you can almost always get a credit card almost immediately after filing bankruptcy. Sometimes it's a secured card and it'll almost always have a really high interest rate on it, but you can get a small balance credit card and you know, charge a tank of gas or, or a dinner once a month on that and make the payment, pay it off every month, and that'll help you build a credit history one creditor at a time and will help you rebuild your credit over time. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm Attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Normally when we do lists, uh, you know, it's like a big argument. We don't agree on it. But I like this list because it's got a mixture of movies from different times. And you then don't have to watch the whole movie. You can watch the opening scene and see how you think it is and see if it's worth watching the movie. Because uh, this list is about the best opening scenes in the history of movies. 
I like this too because uh, as a music dork, like I always say, like that first song on an album will dictate whether or not I'm going to listen to the rest of the record. Like it's it's that's yeah. a first impression. So you better come out swinging. Like you know, welcome to the jungle. Like let's go. Like you know what I mean. Like then it's like okay, I want to hear what the rest of this album has to give me. And it's the same with movies. Some movies where it's just like I don't know if I want to be into this, but then that opening scene, you're just like, holy balls, this is amazing. That's why I've, I, I, you know, I've always liked the opening scenes to James Bond movies. That just that iconic way they do it, oh. and 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 I watched the movie, and I gave you credit. By the way, uh, my wife and I both enjoyed No Time to Die, and I gave you credit. Oh. And dude, wow, look at that! Oh, yeah, uh, she was, first of all, thank you. She was shocked. She was like, "Really?" I'm like, "Yeah." And he's got another show, and she's like, "Really?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's, oh, he's, he's, yeah, Kathy's he's, starting to see what's up. Well, <laughs> the taste maker is coming through. Taste yeah, maker, baby. We, uh, we we didn't get to it, so but she th- she's at least thinking about it. But you bring up that most recent James Bond movie, that opening. I mean, it, it, it goes forever, and it's insane. And then all of a sudden, there's the credits, and my wife laughed. She's like, "We're just getting the credits now." Like yeah. after all of that, I'm like, "They got me sucked in. This is yeah. awesome." Well, we've got the top, I've got 13 here uh, of the top movie openings, uh, best opening scenes for a movie of all time. And I wonder, uh, you know, if you guys have one yourself that you think is great. But uh, oh, yeah. I forgot Ooh. about this one. Uh, and this is back from 1998, which is, you know, it, to me, this movie doesn't seem old, but it is oh, getting no. to the point where it is old. And that's uh, Saving Private Ryan, which... Oh. If you don't remember, I don't remember to be honest. With you. It's well, it's a powerful scene uh, about a powerful time in our history as American troops storm Omaha Beach during World War II, and I remember the scene because it was one of the most realistic depictions of a war battle that I had ever seen on a screen, and it was it was powerful. I was like, wow, they're really showing. It gets, like, yeah, it gets oh, brutal really quick. It doesn't yeah. let up. And you're just like, wow, this is what we're doing? Okay. And it's, but it's, it's definitely an amazing movie scene. And it really, it made me feel like, wow, this is what they went through. This is what, this is what they had to deal with. Not, you know, not glamorized and, you know, and not, uh, and stuff not taken out. You really feel like, holy cow, this is what it was like when they had to go do this back in World War II. This is going to be like my, I know the list is probably going to be a lot more serious than my favorite movie scene of all, opening scene of all time. But all right. it's the Adams family. Where they have the the people singing Christmas carols, and then it pans up slowly, and they drop the potion on them or whatever. I always thought that was the greatest movie opening scene of all time. I don't all right, remember I don't, it. I don't, I don't remember that. Is that the is that Angelica Houston? That yeah, one? the first, the first wow. Adams family. I have to go back and watch it now. Me too, Steve. Yeah. I, I know I watched it, but I don't remember that at all. Because I remember, I remember sitting in the theater when I was a kid and watching. That. I was like, "This is a Christmas movie. I thought it was a Halloween movie." And it just completely takes you by surprise. And it's like, "Oh, it's the Adams family right into oh, it." Oh, I think he's showing it. I do remember that now. You're right. That was pretty cool. Oh, Do you mind? Uh, of, of course, besides Babysitters 2, which has the greatest anything of all time. No, mine, uh, I'm all wow. worried I might be stealing it from the Rev. Oh, I doubt it. Okay, then mine is the opening scene for Pulp Fiction. Oh, which is amazing, oh. but yeah, you're not stealing it from me, but yeah, no. Dude, Did, when I don't have it on the top 13, but it is a great at, scene. Yeah, there was like a diner, yeah. and all oh, of a sudden, no. it's a, and then she's like, what, well, like, any of you blank in peace, move, I'm going to execute yeah. every mother effing one of you. And then and just I'll, go into, yeah, and then just go into Dick Dale, just and, blah, 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 blah. and then I know, like, that's the end of the credits, but then you got to still throw in there the, the next scene after the credits with the Dick Dale song is the Royale with cheese scene. Yep. And it's just like, you've got me. This it's is a, like... It's I mean, it's dialogue great, heavy, yeah. but I, I think that just sets the tone for the rest of the movie. Absolutely. It's such a great opening scene. Oh, and that's not your pick? No. And mine, it's interesting because a texter sent it in, too. And this is a very, it's a very niche movie. It's called The Way of the Gun, and it came out in 2000. It has Benicio Del Toro in it and Ryan Felipe or whatever, whatever his name is. Felipe. Yeah, Felipe and uh, James Caan. And the opening of that is Benicio and Ryan are out at a uh, at a concert, and out front is is uh, Sarah Silverman and she's talking amazing amounts of crap to these two guys and then finally the guys like they're just talking back and forth and Ryan Felipe puts out a non-FCC friendly line to the to Sarah's character and the guy's like well I guess we have to fight now and so <laughs> and then Ryan just 
hauls back and just socks Sarah Silverman in the face because she was the one uh, talking all the s, and then they just get the crap beat out of them. And it's it's one of the funniest scenes, and just out of nowhere, it was one of the funniest things that I'd ever seen when I first saw it. Oh wow. Yeah, oh, I remember the name uh, of this movie, but I don't remember anything else right. about it. It was very Pulp Fiction-y esque. Okay, it was like a bunch of like cool one liners strung together to be in a movie, but it was <laughs> it was super funny and just like I was like, wow, that just took me that brought me all the way into the movie. Yeah, I don't know how old. What is just how old is it, Rev? Uh, Two thousand. Because you know, think about twenty years ago. Uh, you know, we were all raised. You never hit a woman, and if there was ever any argument, it, the dudes would have to fight over something stupid yeah. said to the woman by another. You know, really, you sit there and go, "Wow, I got to get into a fight, and I don't care about this at all." And and my girlfriend, my wife, whatever's being an idiot, and now I'm the one that's going to have to get get beaten up for this. This is ridiculous. Yeah. So this movie really took that convention, and and for the first time, I mean, really, I don't know of a, a movie that did as well as that. Rev for the first time. Where they said, "Oh no, we're going to change it up." Oh, and yeah, it just came out yeah. of nowhere. And just the funniest part was because the guy's just like, "You want to do the man dance? The first dance is yours." And then he just Ryan Felipe just goes and just like socks her, and it's like, "Wow, I did not expect that." And Sarah Silverman, man, she has been a, she has just done some great work. I, you know, I mean, unsung like she's just a part of so many great scenes and movies. Oh yeah, and even in that entire scene is just like one of those things where it's like she's getting under your nerves with how much crap she's talking. Yeah, and so it's like it's not totally under deserved but still just like i never expected it one time says any quentin tarantino movie really yeah you can't go wrong with quentin tarantino movies Reservoir well dogs in yep. the opening scene is amazing. it's funny you guys bring up quentin tarantino movies and yeah reservoir dogs of course pulp fiction but the t- but number five which is the highest on this uh, list wasn't either one of those movies Really? But it is a Quentin Tarantino movie, and Rev, you're going to know when I say it, and it is uh, it is a powerful scene. It's no doubt about it. As soon as I remember this scene, and I'm like, oh my God, I never felt like, like, oh my, like, just like I was with these people hiding underneath oh. this man's floorboards, the Jewish family from oh, Inglorious Bastards. Bastards. Yeah. That was a great, great movie. That was, yeah, that, the yeah, tension uh, in that. That's where we, we were introduced to Christoph Waltz. I, I don't mm-hmm. think I ever saw him before that movie, and he was terrific in that. And Steve, Christoph Waltz was the guy that was the, uh, James Bond's villain that was in jail that ended up... Yes. Yeah, that's, that's Blofeld. He's really good at just being yeah. a mm-hmm. he's great. douche. Yeah. He is so good. Other things is not a douche, and he's phenomenal. He's like, just a good actor. He's apparently. a phenomenal actor. Oh, what are you saying? He's a good actor. I haven't seen anything where he wasn't a douche, uh, though. Alita Battle Angel. He was oh, the father. Oh, God, you're right. I got to watch that movie. That's I a good it. movie, too. I, I have heard, no you know, idea what you just said. It sounded like you said something in a different language. Yeah. Yeah. Alita, Alita Battle Angel? Battle Angel. Battle Angel. Mm-hmm. You know those words. Alita is her name. Yes. Uh, and I've got to get that movie. It's a good I, movie. I, 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 oh, I've got to watch that. I you know which one it. I always like loved? And it's simple and it's silly, but it sets the tone for the movie and it definitely gets you like, oh, boy. And we're talking about best opening scenes of a movie. The Hangover. Yes. Oh, that's a good opening. Yeah, good right? we yes. have to make the phone call and be like, "We lost the groom." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, so there's relatable. Not a, there's not a lot of comedies on right. this list. At least, at least the the top thirteen that I have. Um, you know, it's funny. I my top one. It's two movies. One of them is on the list, but the other one is not on the list. And. Um, uh, and I, oh boy, it's tough to go back and forth. I think because I was 17 years old. But the two movies, I think you know one of them that I put on the list. It's 17. It's got to be Star Trek. I mean, uh, you're, you're, uh, uh, Star Wars. Yes, that's my Star number Wars. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Star Wars for you just because, yeah. That opening scene, I mean, we had never seen, us sci-fi people had never seen special effects like that before. And when the Star Destroyer fills your screen, you yeah. see that one ship getting shot at, and that looks cool because it's coming over your head, like it came over our heads. But then when the Star Destroyer fills the entire screen, you know, it, it, it's just something we had never seen before. And I was like blown away. I'm like, this is a great opening. This is the greatest opening scene ever in a movie. But number two on my list, which is actually this list at um, number seven, would have to be The Matrix. That was uh, that whole Trinity scene. Yeah. That was pretty great. That sucked me in as well. Yeah. So those uh, those would be my top two. Uh, But but, but Star Wars did not make the list, which I am very shocked. Uh, Number two is a movie we know, and we know the music. Dun. (laughs) <laughs> oh, Grease? <laughs> How is that Grease? <laughs> what? There we go. Yeah, you're doing that better. I watched this movie the other day. It was fantastic. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, I told you. It's Greece. Yeah. That actually was a pretty awesome opening scene with the cartoons and stuff. It was. Okay, <laughs> we're, not, I love that. We're, we're not talking about this. All right, Jaws. This. Jaws okay. is a great start to a film. <laughs> yeah. And I have to say, I really appreciate the fact, this was back in 75, and Danny, you say it still, it worked for you. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. I Well, and I, I to be fair, I've always loved that movie ever since I was a kid for some reason, but uh, it was on <laughs> this past weekend, I was watching it, and my girlfriend's like, I've never seen Jaws. Why is it on? Oh, Shark Week. So, like, they had him oh. just playing. <laughs> everywhere All and right, so yeah. i watched both jaws one and jaws two and honestly still holds up for me that's great and i mean that's the cool thing about shark week is it does continue to bring that movie into the light it's sort of like you know uh, whatever the, the 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 angel gets his wings movie every every christmas oh yeah, uh, yeah. Ooh, i got another one it's another stupid comedy but one of my all-time favorite movies Ooh, what's yeah. that? the opening scene to super bad that's a great one where yeah, do you remember fun, that it, when I'm, that was like what am I watching? These are these are teen, like kids, and they're talking about subscribing. Was it the Vagtastic Voyage? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. To, which I was they want to go to. I love it. Yeah. Oh, and then all of a sudden the mom shows up, and then was it Jonah Hill's character? Yeah, won't stop talking about how lucky <laughs> <laughs> he was when he was a kid. And he got the nurse, the mom, and it's like obviously they're not saying it in like <laughs> like <laughs> appropriate terms. Yeah, and it's just. What is this movie? I remember seeing it in the theaters. Like we went and saw that movie in the theaters, and the entire theater is just you're uncomfortably laughing, yeah, yeah. hysterically because you, yeah. there was just no movies like this. And I know a lot of movies after that came out that were kind of trying to go for that same kind of shock, but they did it. It was like the right actors and just yeah. the right vibe to it, man. That's what that makes me love that movie. I totally forgot that opening scene where mom is talking to him in the car, bent over with a low cut shirt, and I totally forgot about that scene. It is oh, so, he's absolutely is jealous. So you got to, you know, what on those as a baby, and then yeah, the oh, comeback yeah. that he had oh. about dad. This oh. is like, <laughs> can't even try and rephrase no, that. No, 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 please don't. I uh, know. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's why uh, uh, Jonah Hill, man. I mean, just some great lines. That that, that guy's oh. delivered some great lines. Him and Michael Cera together, those two were just like comedy gold. It's true. And then, of course, McLovin thrown in there as well. Yeah. And uh, so many other great actors that are a part of it. Seth Rogen. There's so many great moments. But the two of them were just like, oh, man, that was a great one-two punch. Yep. You know that I think about it with those three? Have they ever been in anything together again outside of Superbad? I'm trying to think if we... I mean, you think they would have milked that a lot. No, I don't think so. I bet yeah. there's offers and probably timing or money wasn't, wasn't there. I don't know. But, yeah, you put those three together... If, uh, like bring back like a super bad sequel or just okay. anything with those guys yeah i think because they you're right steve they had really good chemistry all three of them it was so great yeah well uh so we're talking about the the, the best opening scenes in the movie we told you saver private ryan was number one jaws number two oh, the day of my daughter's wedding godfather number three that scene where a dude's trying to get the godfather to help him on his daughter's wedding oh yes oh yeah yeah uh, and the social network, which was, I don't remember this dialogue between Jesse Eisenberg and Ro- Rooney Mara oh, yeah, over yeah. a few beers in Harvard. I totally forget that scene, but they say it's a great opening scene. Yeah, because it's kind of like, well, and that, that whole movie is about like how he invented Facebook to like get back at the girl. He was like a, he was a bitter ex. So that, that opening scene is they're just in a bar and they just go, it's really quick. Like they go back really quick with each other and she breaks up with him and that's the opening scene. I do remember now that Vicky pulled it up on YouTube. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty good one. Oh, so Rooney yeah. Mara is fantastic. Oh, right. I wouldn't have I, I would have never put that into my like top no, of all time, either. but I can understand why people like it. No, my buddy Chase just messaged me and he said the dirt, if you remember that one with oh, Molly Crew, crew. Oh, that yeah. intro scene, which oh. I cannot describe. Yeah. <laughs> nope. That was Well, weird. there you go. Super uh, Trooper so in Texas. I forgot about that. The, yes. The opening like just ten minutes of Super Troopers is yeah. like some is like ten of the funniest minutes you ever watch in the a movie. The schnozberries taste like schnozberries. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised the Dark Knight didn't make it on this list. It actually did make the list, Danny. You're oh, right. nice. The, yeah, the Dark Knight did get on there. Oh, the clowns? Uh, number yeah, eight. that's what, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was really eight. solid. Your uh, first introduction introduction of the the Joker. Oh, it's so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lion King was number nine on the list. Oh, oh thank goodness. Yeah, and uh, Drive. <laughs> Drive, which is a great movie, Ryan Gosling movie, uh, and we, you know, we see, we see his character escaping the scene of a crime. That was a pretty good. It's a big chase scene. That was that's good too. So there you go, kids. There's your list of the best opening scenes of all time for you to disagree with and come up with your own list. Yep. It just makes you kind of want to go back and watch some of these movies, though. That's why or I at wonder. Least the if opening you... scenes probably a lot less. You yeah, can yeah, yeah, yeah. Way you more do that, that. In five six minutes. You're good. You're right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'll give you everything you need when you think about it. 
We got a popular rock star that says that he has no plans of slowing down even after being in the business for over 45 years. Who said that? You're going to hear from him at 820 on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock at 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Over 45 years after starting his music career, Billy Idol just did an interview and shared that he's excited. I mean, he's just as excited to record and play on stage as he ever was. And again, like I said, he started his career over 45 years ago. Wow. I, dude, it's insane. I mean, I know he's gotten older, but he has like aged so slowly. And it's, it's it, like he doesn't look much different than he did 20 years ago. And so, and, it, and I don't know if you've ever seen Billy Idol live. I have never, no. no. Oh, it's, you got to make it. You got to make it a point to see him. It's, yeah, a party. it's worth it. Yeah, I'm not even a huge Billy Idol fan. And I, I saw him forever ago. Back, remember when they used to do concerts at the pier? Yeah. Oh, wow, the, yeah. This is like, it's got to be like 15, 20, no, probably 20 years ago. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah it's a forever ago. Yes. <laughs> but man, oh, that man. was a cool concert spot, like to be able to see some random shows. And he played there and it was just like, I mean, talk about the crowd. The crowd was like all ages, like from 12 to 70. And everybody was like just jamming out to all of his songs and his band was great. It was just a party up there. It was awesome. Well, I do have a chance to see him. He's touring the States this summer and the rest of the world starting in September. And here he is talking about the fact, yeah, 45 years in, he's still doing it. I think if the music wasn't any good, yeah, yeah, maybe I would just be a granddad, you know. But, yeah, the fact we've got something good to play, I mean, I've got a killer band. And, you know, it's just the great guys to work with. And so it's it's a fun thing. It's just still got that element of fun that we were looking for when we first started out, you know. Crap, I'm lucky, man. I don't see any Seattle dates, so... Dang it. Oh, BJ, are you going to be in California though uh, in uh, late August? Or it's possible. Ventura, Ven- yeah, and oh, also okay. in San Diego. He's doing a couple of shows there. I, I'm not. I, we're not too far from San Diego and Newport Beach. That's oh. a, you know, that's that's you know, about a 45 to an hour drive. Yeah. Oh, it's a Wednesday night though. You're going to go party oh, on a Wednesday night. That's going to be tough. Yeah. Um. You, you know. How, now, how does he do it? How is Billy Idol after all these years able to still like go out there and perform? Because you know he is like he's the granddad age. And uh, he said, well, you know, that heavy drinking, that drugging, yeah, I can't be doing that. What I've done is I've managed to sort of get control of myself and uh, create a bit of discipline. I was able to put a lot of the heavy, hard stuff on the back burner. I I don't go looking for it anymore. So don't do a lot of drugs, he's basically saying. Yeah, that's (laughs) it. He didn't say don't do any. (laughs) Just don't go nuts. Right. And let me tell you, he's got a song that I like that he released in 2021. But I don't know if it was either uh, Umbrella Academy or Stranger Things. But the song "Bitter Taste" was on, and I was like, "Who is this?" And I went and looked for the song, and I'm like, "It's damn Billy Idol." It is a great song if you haven't heard it. It's I a, haven't. I know he put on. It's on his EP that he put out last year. Dude, which... "Bitter Taste" is good. Umbrella and... Academy. Yeah, it was on Umbrella. So that's so. I mean, I heard this, and I'm like, Umbrella Academy has got great music in it. That it's a TV show on Netflix, and so I heard this, and I'm like, this is a great scene. I love this song, and then I go check it out, and it's freaking Billy Idol, and I'm like, wow, how cool is it for him? Yeah, he should. I mean, he's that song's a great song, and it's relevant to the fact that it's put on a hip young person's Netflix show. Good for him, man. I mean, that that's not easy to do. What I love about Billy Idol is it seems like every five or so years. He releases some kind of record that basically includes all of his hits. It yeah. could just be like he did like a story VH1 storytellers many years ago. Then like then you put out like a, a greatest hits, but he would call it something random, and then he put out another greatest hits, call it something completely different. And it's like, oh yeah, here's a new is that new Billy? I don't know. Nope, there I see Dancing with Myself, and I see White Wedding and Rebel Yell. Yeah, it's so <laughs> funny though. Like and every once in a while, I'll sprinkle in a new record of new material. But I think he, he understands his audience. They just want to hear the hits. Yeah, uh, though I will tell you, bitter taste is worth it. You know, it is. Is it a a rocker or is it a? uh, I got it. I got it. If you want to hear a little bit. Oh yeah, let's let's hear. Yeah, Rabbi, check it out. Yeah. Rebel yell. Yeah, I'm yeah. out. <laughs> oh, you're out. No, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah, money, money. It's, it's, Ooh, it's, money, a, it's, money. 
It's a great haunting tune. I think you got to give it more time. I think it's a it's a super haunting tune, and uh, that's when we said upside down in there. I think that's probably why I thought it was Stranger Things. But uh, yeah, I, I like it a lot, and I am a Billy Idol fan. So I wrote right. my daughter. I didn't like it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm kidding. It wasn't bad. Wow. It was yeah, fine. Man. Yeah, it was I loved fine. it. I was. I mean, and I didn't know it was him. I just loved it because I thought I don't know who this is, but this is a great tune. Well, yeah. At least for me, anyway. And it turns out it was him. Remember eyes without a face. No. That's uh, yeah. Oh, you don't man. remember that, Rev? It's a haunt. It's another haunting that, that's song. That's why it made me think of Eyes Without a Face because yeah. that was kind of that that version of Billy Idol where he had like kind of like that brooding sound going on. It wasn't as melodic like this one had a more of a melodic feel to it. As uh, whereas Eyes Without a Face was super like yeah super. Oh, haunting. I do know this song. I just yeah. I forgot that it was Billy Idol. Oh yeah. So eighty sound, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It, it it does have that '80s stuff in there, and it's more melodic than I remember. Actually, I, I for some reason I thought it was like really very eerie, but it's and, still a and musically maybe. more cheesy than I remember because yeah. they, they, really it's cheesy. funny because he was such a punk dude back in the day, and then he just kind of was like, nope, I'm just going to do whatever I want to do and become a pop star. Well, it's pop punk though, Steve. Because Not that song. Uh, no, but I mean, yeah, the, the, his song with Generation X, which was the band he was in before just going out on his own, uh, Dancing With Myself is very poppy. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. So, and that was the, I think that is the first time any of us ever heard of Billy Idol was with Gen X. So, um, and of course he did, you know, that I don't know if he's actually too old to be a Gen Xer. It's fascinating. I don't know how old he is, but oh, he definitely, definitely was too old. He's yeah, kind of on your age. Yeah, he's a boomer. Well, I'm a, I'm close he's 66. though. He's 66. He's 66. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a, definitely a boomer. He's older than me. I'm close. It was like 1964, I think, is when Gen X started, and I just missed it. Uh, so you know, he yeah, he's older than me. So there you go. How about he's he's like one of those artists that just like he never was like I, I don't know if he's anybody's favorite artist, but like when you hear some of his hit songs, like oh, yeah, I like this Billy Idol song. And he shows up in uh, in Julia Gulia. <laughs> Dude, that scene was awesome. It was so great. And he was so badass in it. Yeah. He's had a bunch of one hit wonder type moments. That's the thing. You but know, multiple like, one hit wonder. So he's yeah, not, he's so he's not a, a one hit wonder. Right, he's but just I mean, a bona fide rock star. <laughs> well, my point being is they're iconic though. You know what I mean? Like the one like the one hit wonder songs are iconic and you remember them. Right. But Dancing with Myself is very iconic and as well as Rebel Yell and White you know, Wedding. You, you, yeah, you know, Cradle usually, of Love. Oh, yeah, you best don't get music a lot video of those ever. moments. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I mean, yeah. where, where like it somehow transcends generations some of his songs. Songs. That's a pretty special thing to have multiple times in your career like that. The Cradle of Love video also is great, not only because it has an extremely attractive girl just dancing on a bed and when you're a teen and like you know you don't have access to anything, you're Whoa, just like, oh, this girl yep. is a smoke show. Yeah. Yep. But apparently, I think the backstory is the, the way they came up with the video of him singing in a, the, the frames of the artwork on the walls is because he had a broken leg. So he couldn't do anything. So that they basically made the video so oh. that it could accommodate the fact that he wouldn't be able to like perform in the music video. Nice. See, that, and that turned that out could to be, be wrong. Video. I, if I remember correctly, that was the backstory behind the music video. No, I choose to believe it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he said he had to give up a lot of that heavy lifestyle. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, that broken leg came from being trashed. And whatever happened to that girl that was in that music video? I felt like she had a, a bright future. but She's somebody's mom by now. Well, thanks. Wow, thanks for that. I hate to say it. I mean, she's, <laughs> she's might be somebody's <laughs> grandma. Yeah, she's yeah. Probably, yeah. Yeah. I didn't see. I didn't go that far. I only said I figured mom, but yeah, grandma is probably. I'm mean, just wondering what ever happened to her. It actually was voted number 33 of uh, VH1's 50 sexiest mu- video moments. Yeah. I agree. It deserves it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Do yourself a favor and watch that music. Do <laughs> yes. Yourself. You know what, Steve? I mean, it, it, you just can't. It's tough to capture those t- nostalgic times where that's all we had. Those were our videos. That was our porn hub. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That I was our Sears yeah. catalog. Yeah, it was. I hope so, if anybody even knows what that means, except maybe you, me, and the rest. Yeah. Me, uh, oh, yeah, and I used yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for that. We really, uh, damn. 
All right, so uh, BuzzFeed, they conducted a poll on current bridal party trends. Ooh. Ask, yeah, and uh, they decided, okay, are these trends tacky, tasteful, or totally fine? I feel like we got to bring your daughter into the room. Uh, yeah, because yeah, anybody, yeah, I agree. If, I agree. If anybody is has got the wedding fever on their mind, of course it's her because she's getting married but in less than a year. I bet there's going to be things on here that are tacky oh, yeah. that she's oh, all yeah. in for. 100%. And may actually be doing. Rev, I feel like everything that's going to be voted tacky on this list, your daughter's going to want to do. I'm going to agree uh, with this, yeah. Uh, my, you know, his daughter, my daughter. Well, yeah, no, yeah BJ's daughter. Yeah, right. oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Not yet, yeah. No, Carl or Frank, they're not daughters. Well, but yeah. they're not. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Can I, I have one that oh, I do? have to think, and I think it's always awesome whenever I see a bachelorette party having these, but All I know right. they're, they're it's anything that has a wiener on it. Ah! Oh, like the little the tiara or the straws. Yes. The hats, the cups. I yeah. think it's the funniest thing in the world when you see those. So my girlfriend literally went to a bachelorette party this past weekend, and she brought back this thing. It was a wiener-shaped lime squeezer. That's amazing. So you put the lime in the lower half, and then it kind of drips out, if you know what I'm saying, oh, to boy. whatever drink oh, that you're me. drinking. Wow. I, I think we all need that in our life, not just bachelorettes. I was yeah, like, yeah. you need to take Fun. this everywhere with you. <laughs> yeah, Sarah was in charge of a uh, of a game that had to be made for a bachelorette party, and uh, I had to cut out all of these wiener-shaped <laughs> trivia questions and then laminate them. That's amazing. So, yeah. You didn't have to. You chose to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just asked if I could borrow your laminator, and then they were just out on the kitchen counter, and yeah. you're used to cutting all your little things Wieners for your everywhere. board game. Yeah. So yeah. he was like, I don't trust you cutting these correctly. I yeah. got this. It's like I have, I'm well-versed in cutting dong-shaped items, so I right. handle it. <laughs> it is which, is, which is ironic, because you're not... Never mind. What? <laughs> I was Uncut. Wow. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I think we got it. Thanks. Oh, well, Thanks. I didn't know Fred did. My daughter's in the room. That's I why I stopped. Need... Oh, is that why you stopped? But then, but you, I did then, need can, clarification. then you still explained it again. Well, I hope she didn't listen at that point. I don't know. Yeah, well, Your she's mouse. got headphones on, so, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 70, by the way, you love this number. 69% of the people believe it's tacky to have wiener-shaped items. What? Nice. It is tacky, but it's awesome. It's supposed to be awesome, tacky. Right? Yeah, it's like, that's like saying, like, don't put up pumpkins for Halloween. No, you do it, because right. even if it's tacky, you do it. Sarah, are you going to have wiener-shaped items for your... I better. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, yeah, if, if my if my bridal party doesn't, they don't know me. They're kicked out of the wedding. If so they who don't. are they talking I to? I mean, unless they, th- unless they think tacky is a fun, positive word, but I mean, 69% of the people, yet almost every bachelor party, bachelor party I know, there's something wiener shaped. So if they're tacky, why would uh, so many people be using them? Oh, dude, them? I'm sure there's a lot of bachelorette parties that like, go to like the vineyards or some kind of like, oh, yeah, 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 really? Yeah. Right. I have and a I friend. And I don't that. think they're sipping out of like a dong shaped wine no. glass or something Boring. like that. Right. Yeah, I have a friend that just got engaged and I think she's probably going to be a little too classy for Oh, come the on. Shaped. But I might be in her bridal bridal party so if i'm at her bachelor oh, oh, yeah. i'm bringing them anyway sorry yeah. girl <laughs> yeah i mean it's kind of like she has to That's expect so that with you <laughs> just pull them yeah. out of your purse a bunch yes. of dong straws I'm ready yep. she's yeah. gonna be so disappointed <laughs> all right how about this uh, anybody else have anything on the list they think that they feel like is going to be considered tacky because mm. I, I got the number list one list. that uh the list I, I, you know, yeah. when, like, like the, there's certain bachelorette parties oh. that have a list of a thing, like a scavenger hunt list. Things you have oh. to do. Oh. You know, give a random guy a lap dance or, like, get a kiss on a cheek from someone. I mean, lick oh, a bald fun. man's head. <laughs> Wait, what? That happened to me once. Are you serious? Wait, yes. were you the man being licked or were you licking someone's head? I wasn't at the bachelorette party. I don't know. Yeah, you could have been at the it. bar there. I'm, I'm with Vicky on this. They made I, me a shirt for my bachelor party to do the, those kind of things. Oh, no, no. This was a random bachelorette party came up to me. This is forever ago. And I was in my early 30s, I think. And they're like, oh, we have a weird request. And I was like, at the time, single. And they were trying. I'm like, what's up? <laughs> what's <laughs> up, ladies? <laughs> they're like, they show me their shirt. And they're like, well, we have something on here that we need to accomplish. And I'm looking down there. And I'm like, well... Doesn't say kiss a bald man. I see it says lick a bald man's head. <laughs> wow. I mean, I you could have really decided. You could have gone two ways with that. I let him. Nice. You let him go. Oh, well, really? You let him. I mean, go. You could, like I said, you could go said, all the way. They just had to lick my head. Well, like we, like, I think Vicky and I are pretty much on the same page on this. You could have really. I mean, it, was I'm guys, get your mind out of the gutter. This is a very respectable the, bachelorette party. The only clearly. thing I'm envisioning at this point in time is from the Big Lebowski when uh, the Jesus is licking the uh, bowling ball. 
And that's all I see. Oh my god. That is all I see right now. Yeah, it wasn't that it wasn't that oh, dramatic. Man, so was it the bride that had to lick your head? Was that the idea? You know, I didn't ask many questions, BJ. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I was like, How many licks did you get? Two. Nice. All right. Wow. Two. All of a sudden, Steve's getting wow. beat up by the groom to be. Yeah. <laughs> Where okay. is this man? He's the only bald man here. <laughs> I swear it wasn't me. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, that's not on the list, by the way, uh, the, 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 the tacky list. But number one is something that, I mean, happens, I think, um, well, this isn't a bachelor. Again, this is a bridal party, so I'm assuming this is for bachelorettes, right? But, I mean, but hiring a well, stripper. The, the, yeah. the bridal yeah. party is considered both, I think. You can call oh, good call. All right. Bridal. Yeah. yeah. So is, is it considered tacky to hire a stripper at a bachelor party these days? Because I, I haven't no, been to one forever. Is it tacky to hire a stripper for the actual wedding? That's I need no, to know. No, that to me is... Okay, uh, good. That's my gift to you. That's a Vegas. test. Yeah. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah, that's a test. Uh, you know, and, and hopefully everybody passes. Yeah, I don't think that's tacky at all. I really no, hope... Mike, of course you don't. ...that yeah. my fiancé's uh, best man hires him a stripper. Because I was like, I want... I was thinking about maybe somehow hiring a stripper to surprise, but that shouldn't be my job. No, it really shouldn't. No, it's you know? not your job. No, but See, I was like, babe, you need to have strippers at your bachelor party. I, I would rather just... go to a strip club than hire a stripper. Yeah, that's yeah. what we did. We went yeah. to a strip club. Yeah. Uh, that's better. I just feel like it's awkward when it's just like, there's like t- 10 dudes and then like one stripper. Like, yeah. It's like, God. And then that one bodyguard. One. Yes. <laughs> and especially Do you... if you don't vet the talent before they come to your house mm-hmm. and then they show up and they give the groom to be a lap dance and then they break the chair that they're sitting in. <laughs> Whoa! Uh, uh, is this hypothetical? No, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It was fantastic. They they had these two strippers come over and they were both just kind of going to town on him in this chair and it broke his dining ta- table table chair that he oh, was sitting in. Those can be expensive. Oh That's yeah. impressive. Yeah. They were putting in work. They deserve that money. <laughs> Yeah, I'm with I'm with you guys. Uh, go to a club, and then do you think that uh, they go you know, to like Oregon, where you can drink, have a party, oh, right, really that's anywhere that's other than Washington? Been there, done that. Yeah. Uh, here's the problem, though. Uh, you're now getting to people. Well, actually, it's not a problem because most people don't have a problem with this, and that is having a destination bachelor party in another city or country. Only 26 percent of the people think that's tacky. Yeah. So most people are okay yeah, with it. It's not tacky. I just won't go. <laughs> I don't oh. think it's tacky, but it is expensive. Oh, most, absolutely. So. That's exactly why I won't go. See, most of the bachelor parties I've ever been to have been out of town. Whether they've been, it's been Oregon, Arizona, I believe, and also Vegas. But that's all kind of in the same general area. Like earlier this year, I had to go to my cousin's. Yeah, and I, didn't, I, I didn't have to go to like Turkey or something. No, <laughs> I went all the way to New that's Orleans. A that's right a there. far trip. Dude, strip oh, clubs in Turkey are ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> Turkey is the number one bachelor party yesterday. I don't know if you guys heard about this. Tour the, 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 you haven't lived until you've been to Turkey Lips. It's the best yeah. strip club. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Okay. That is, uh, yeah, it's a premier club in Turkey. Turkey Lips, yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, congratulations. Well, if you to don't Google it, it's not actually a club name. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, but I'm sure, sure I'm sure it's on Urban Dictionary, and I want to know what it is. No. Yeah. I think it's interesting that they're thinking that taking pole dancing classes is okay, but, uh, you know, hiring a stripper is not okay, because it's kind of like, you know, it's the stripper's the a professional. Yeah, but for some, like, you know, going to a pole dancing class is like a fun bonding also exercise. Yeah. I'm not going to do that at your bachelor party, Steve, ever. I'm just <laughs> not going to do it. I, I know you didn't come. And you yeah, didn't I was, I, I'm sorry. It was in Oregon, uh, you know, pole dancing class in Oregon. I we all worked our cores, BJ. We yeah, all yeah. worked our cores. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, how about this? I don't know about this. And most people don't think this is tacky. A combo bachelor bachelorette party. No, no that uh, seems weird. But it's no. ha- but I mean, these people don't have a problem with it. Is that a thing that I didn't even know that was a thing that's happening? That's definitely a thing. I like oh, why yeah. Sarah's so upset about it. Is that oh. like the joint Facebook for you? What's happening here? Yeah, yeah I just think it's <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't know. I had yeah. a friend who did a joint one, and like they all stayed in like a really big house together, and like the girls would do one thing, and the guys would do one thing, and then they'd meet up at the end. Why? why? I always feel like that's somebody in that. Somebody that's getting married is insecure. Oh, for yes, sure. One, yes. with, either one or both. See, I've been to one, but the the bride to be was only twenty, so she couldn't even drink, anyways. So it didn't really matter. We both did our thing and then came together at the end of the night for dinner or something. But that was the most of it. 
We didn't do like a joint bachelor bachelor party thing where ours it was like you, you have your own parties at, at another day, but one day we got everybody together to just have dinner together. Oh yeah, we've and, done that. We yeah, went to the yeah. melting pot and it was awesome. Oh, nice. It was awesome until the waiter or waitress I can't remember who it was a man or a female, but they they shamed the Ted Smith because he wanted to order something on the menu that was meant for couples. Oh. oh, and he was the only person there that wasn't a couple, oh. and he'll bring it up to this day because oh. they're like, "Sir, that's not available unless you." <laughs> <laughs> they because it was just meant for two. Oh, well, horrible. I mean, they're like you can get it, but it's like it's meant for two people. Oh, <laughs> and it was <laughs> so funny. <laughs> That was so brutal. That is very brutal. <laughs> and oh, we still laugh brutal. about that to this day. Oh, that's a beating, man. No, he doesn't laugh about it. <laughs> well, he brings it up, and I laugh. <laughs> so one of us is laughing. <laughs> Yesterday, Steve he did get this one wrong. In which sea is the island country of Malta? The Caspian. No. The Sea of Tranquility. No. <laughs> the Persian <laughs> Sea. No. Sorry, sir. Do you remember, Steve, or is he going to ask this again sometime? I don't. Um, okay. Turkey Sea. Yeah, it's not. It's the Mediterranean. <laughs> turkey sea. The Turkey Lip Sea. No! Uh, you want to shout at Beating Steve, you got it. 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Migs at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. How long is a bankruptcy going to affect my credit rating? Of course, most of the time, by the time we're, we're talking about filing a bankruptcy, the credit has already taken a huge hit. Uh, chapter 7 is going to affect it more negatively than Chapter 13. Uh, chapter 7 stays on your credit report for 10 years from the time you file. It usually takes 7 or 8 years for your credit scores to get back into the normal range in a Chapter 7 case. However, your credit will start to recover even in Chapter 7 after about a year. Um, you'll be able to get credit again right away, usually before uh, your case is even over. Uh, chapter 13 stays on your credit report for seven years and usually takes about three or three and a half years for your credit to get back in the normal range. So chapter 13 uh, will mean your credit gets better much more rapidly. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. Welcome to the CPAP Games live from the Hayes bedroom. It's another eventful night, Bruce. It sure is, Ron. Steve has been flailing everywhere, struggling with this CPAP. His wife, Michelle, is as tense as a fiddle string, trying to contain her rage. Michelle's rolling Steve over. There he goes, and the mask is off. Oh, my, the snoring. Michelle throws an elbow, now a shove. And she's leaving for the couch, taking her place as the Hayes' 100-pound lab. Bask in that dog breath, Steve. With all this struggle, Steve should get Inspire. Absolutely, Bruce. Inspire is a sleep apnea treatment that gives you comfortable, restful sleep with the click of a remote. That's right, a button. As you sleep, Inspire keeps you breathing normally and sleeping peacefully. There's no mask and no hose. Just sleep. Learn more at InspireSleep.com. That's InspireSleep.com. Inspire, sleep apnea innovation. Inspire is not for everyone. Talk to your doctor to see if it's right for you and review important safety information at inspiresleep.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at bjgeeknation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. You know, man, we've waited a long time, and you've waited a long time. So luckily, it wasn't just us in charge of this, because we just, well, all we're doing is bring you the weenie toss, but luckily Ryan Castle <laughs> and Taryn and a lot of people put a lot of work we're into We're tossing Ryan? Away. Yeah. Hey. We're not tossing. Uh, we're not tossing. Uh, yeah, so our contribution to Pain in the Grass is a weenie toss. Luckily, their contribution is three amazing days of music starting on Labor Day weekend, baby. DJ, every contribution matters, though, when it comes to Pain in the Grass. But oh, you're absolutely way, yeah. right. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Labor Day weekend. You've got Incubus. You've got Bush. You've got Sublime with Rome. 
George Thorgan, The Destroyers, yes. Alice in Chains, Breaking Benjamin, a ton Woo. of other great bands. you got to go to KSW.com to see the entire lineup because it's ridiculous. Tickets are on sale at Ticketmaster right now. And if you want to hang with us, get out of the insanity and go into the hot dog flinging insanity, well then... Uh, you want to get the BJ and Migs party with the weenie toss. Yeah, you that's to- not all we're doing. But yes, we're having the first ever BJ and Migs weenie toss. Where oh, yeah? That's one, not all we're doing? One winner will walk away each day with a trophy Woo! and a championship yeah. pelt, courtesy of Rocky the Seawolf, yeah, which is yeah. pretty awesome. Okay. Uh, so and also we'll be hanging out, drinking, and eating, yes. and just uh, yes. getting a break from all the insanity of Pain the Grass with all of our, our favorite rockaholics. Tickets are at Ticketmaster. All the info about the private party and more at KISW.com. Let's play Beat Mix. It's time to play the jam. Yeah. So everybody scream his name. Beat Mix. Don't be a loser. Whoa. Beat Mix. You're a loser. It is time for Beat Mix. And it's Tuesday. So let's turn down for Julio Gulio. Center yeah. field. Here we go. Bye bye. And we don't know if we'll see a home run tonight because we don't even know if he's playing. Yeah, it's a rumor. Yeah. Rumor. Yeah. Well, if he doesn't hit a home run, maybe like Ty France will keep hitting home runs. I hope somebody does. Yeah. Well, I hope we get another guy. win, man. That Ty France guy is something. He's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> he is pretty cool. We we just we got to get Robbie Ray on this. We got to get him back. We just got to figure out how to get him to be a good pitcher against we, good teams. One bad outing. That's not. Yeah, that's but not. against the ass. I mean, that's the team we're going to probably have to face. Astros. It's got to be D. What against the asses or the oh. Astros? <laughs> yeah, I mean, or it's like all right. The, it's all right. Like I said, you know, they always got to figure it out. Some of the baseball greats have always said the first three games after the All Star break are are not. Important. I feel like, uh, yeah, I feel like somebody said that. I don't know if it was you or not, but yeah. I think it was you. Yeah, I think it was yeah. a Steveism there. I heard a great man say it earlier this morning. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree with him. <laughs> Let's get to our contestant today. We got Josh in Tacoma. Josh, are you there? Ow! Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Josh. And Steve, Ow! what is he playing for today? Pain in the Grass tickets for Friday's <laughs> Pain in the Grass. Be able to check out Incubus and Sublime with Rome. Plus, We'll hook you up with a pair of passes to come to the BJ Migs party. Sponsored by the Advocates. If you want tickets and information, just go to KISW.com. All right, Steve. Get out of here. For those playing at home, Josh will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Josh, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? I'm ready. Back rub was the original name for which often used internet search engine? Google? Yes. What classic animated show takes place in the fictional city of Bedrock? Flintstones. Yes. Who is the lead singer of the Rolling Stones? Mick Jagger. Yes. What color flag is the signal for surrender? White. Yes. What year of the mid-90s was the film The Usual Suspects released? 94? No. 95? 95, yes. Helen Mirren played Queen Elizabeth II in which 2006 movie? Pass. What is when one is envious? They are said to be what color? Green. Yes. What film was Stanley Kubrick working on when he passed away? Ooh. Pass. What type of dog is Handsome Dan, the mascot of Yale University? Bulldog. Yes. How many lords are leaping in the song Twelve Days of Christmas? Seven. No. Eleven. No. Ten. Yeah! yeah! One, two, buddy. three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Correct. Ooh, this is going to be quite a Ow! close one. That's a good score right there, Josh. You've got definitely a chance to win and and, and lose and, and ties. Okay, yeah, yeah, a chance to win would have been fine. Yeah, I guess I didn't need to keep going on with no, that. You really one, did. Did. You're yeah. fine. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Well, Steve's back. Yes. And he has a chance to win mm-hmm. or lose or tie. You know oh, it. Okay, then. Yeah. Uh, are you ready? Oh, yeah! Backrub was the original name for which often used internet search engine? Backrub? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Google? Yes. What classic animated show takes wow. place in the fictional city of Bedrock? Uh, Flintstones. Yes. Who is the lead singer of the Rolling Stones? Mick Jagger. Yes. What color flag is the signal for surrender? Cheap chick. No. Uh, wait, uh, white. <laughs> yes. Oh, with surrender, I get it. Yeah. What year uh, of the mid-90s was the film The Usual Suspects released? 
95. Yes. Helen Mirren played Queen Elizabeth II in which 2006 movie? Uh, Helen's Day Off. No. Um, <laughs> Titanic. No. Um, Pootie Tang. No. Okay. When one is envious, they are said to be what color? Green. Yes. What film was Stanley Kubrick working on when he passed away? Care Bears movie. No. <laughs> Oh, um, Star Wars. No. Star Trek. Uh, no. Uh, what type of dog is Handsome Dan, the mascot of Yale University? Oh, Bulldog. Yes. How many lords are leaping in the song The Twelve Days of Christmas? Six. No. Oh. Nine. No. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You yeah, lose. Yeah. Josh wins oh. eight to seven. Oh. Oh. oh, Josh can howl all he wants. He got me a song. Good job, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, you're very we'll welcome. We'll see you at the BJMX party, and we'll be tossing some wieners. Yeah, yeah. that's it. And uh, see, I'm going to toss this your way. Whoa! Oh, the song. The deciding factor was Josh with the Lords of uh, Lords of Leaping. Ten Lords of Leaping. Ten Lords of Leaping. So, oh, yeah, come yeah, on, yeah. Steve. Your standard six to nine wasn't going to work on that one, unfortunately. Nope. Uh, does anybody happen to know the film that Stanley Kubrick was working on when he passed away? It was obviously oh, his last one. It's like a sci-fi film. Didn't no. S- oh. No, I thought, uh, oh, okay, I was going to say AI, but I, that, that must have been Oliver Stone, right? Uh, uh, no, no, because Oliver Stone's still around. Yeah, well, Oliver- AI, wasn't it? There was that movie where like somebody someone died, died somebody and died somebody in took AI. over. Maybe well, that yeah, was yeah, the so- one. Yeah, is it, yeah, is it? A, it's not artificial intelligence. AI? No, no, it was uh, eyes wide shut. So maybe it was that, actually AI. Oh, now that you bring that up, I'm going to say so I'm going to say eyes wide shut because that would have been my second guess. Because I didn't. Th- I think Oliver Stone. I think uh, Oliver Stone's still alive. I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah. who the hell died in the middle mid- AI that uh, Spielberg had to take over? I yeah, mean, unless uh, it looks like it was Stanley Kubrick who was originally weird. began the producer director role. Oh, oh, so but maybe then he started he acquitted it. the rights. It's it's really huh? I don't understand what that means. Yeah, I thought he was directing it, but I don't know which kid. But well, he could have died in both oh, movies. Apparently, the whole movie didn't gain momentum, so it wasn't really working out. Plus, then he died. Then Spielberg got it. Uh, so he tried okay. doing it back in the seventies, didn't work out. So he wasn't oh. actually working on it, and that's why Spielberg came in. Oh, so he, it. he never he never directed any part of artificial intelligence. I thought he did. Yeah, like he started to like it finally got traction once he died. Yeah, but that, yeah. that's what I'm, well, that's what I'm yeah, saying. But he yeah, wasn't, like, yeah, so nobody so, really cared about it. Is but, what well, I'm hold saying. on a second. This is, I mean, only because, Vicky, I know you're reading stuff. Did he direct the movie? Because he couldn't have directed two movies unless he directed them both at the same time and died on both movies. Because I, I already directed AI. That's my answer. It says, in yes. 1995, Kubrick handed AI to Spielberg, but the film did not gain momentum until Kubrick's death in 1999. So, oh. yeah, he did not. So it was Eyes Wide Shut, thank goodness. Yeah, oh, yeah everything well, I go- and when you Google who last movie ever directed, I wa- Eyes Wide Shut is what comes up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow, single. that is so thank weird. Goodness, thank God. You know what? There's a Mandela effect yes. for me because we Same. always thought that uh, that Kubrick, that, that the reason uh, the AI was a weird movie because half of it was directed by one guy and half of it was directed by Spielberg because they have so such different field. But maybe Spielberg did the whole movie, which means... I don't know what that means because it's... Uh, I, yeah, I feel like something we're missing about yeah. that because I agree there was something there, but mm-hmm. I, I don't know if it has any, It clearly does nothing to do with Kubrick, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. all right. He's <laughs> well, there you go. Because he's, well, dead. Yeah, what, he's dead. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's dead. Uh, yeah. Also, the other one that you missed, Josh did not get correct, Helen Mirren playing Queen Elizabeth II in which 2006 movie? The Queen's Gambit. Oh, you're so close. The Queen and I? No, just... The Queen. T- there you go. Damn it's it. It's just the Queen. What? Yeah, it's one of those, again, it's a Ken Jennings it thing. Is. You're like, how would I know this? Oh, maybe it's in the in the yeah, question. Exactly. Damn it. I well, should have done that. You should have, yeah. but you didn't, so you lost. So Thank congrats you. to Josh. Oh. Thank you. I'm so sorry for your loss. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. This, I don't know if you heard this, this, this news. Unfortunately, we are, we are losing a lot of fake mobsters. As uh, actor Paul Sorvino died yesterday of natural causes, Dude. 83 years old. I saw that, and that was my first thought, too. I was like, man, who, there, is there like a, a whack? You know, I, obviously, it, it's awful news, but like, it just seems like every single mobster is going right now. Yeah, I mean, and Goodfellas, you know, man, we we, we lost Ray Liotta, uh, mm-hmm. obviously, from Goodfellas. And we lost Sorvino, also from Goodfellas. James Caan from The Godfather recently yep. passed away. And, of course, from The Sopranos, Tony uh, Sirico, Paulie Walnuts, we lost him. Hey, Paulie Walnuts. 
Um, so, you know, he's no, he was 83 years old, Paul Servino. The other reason he, you might know him is he was in the news saying he would basically beat the crap out of Harvey Weinstein because of allegations with, with Weinstein and Paul's daughter, Mira, uh, Mira Servino. Oh, dude, uh, you know, I never even put two and two together that I was his daughter. Yeah, that's his kid. Yeah, that makes and sense. And they caught him unloading groceries name. on TMZ. And this video is spreading virally again because of his death. And there he is just unpacking groceries in his, in his car. And he's just like, I'll punch him in the head. I'll put him in a wheelchair. I mean, he was just, you know, uh, he had no holes barred about what he felt about Harvey Weinstein. So uh, Paul Servino passed away at 83 years old. So yeah, If I'm yeah. a mobster, if I ever played a mobster in a movie, I'd be like, man, got to go get my annual checkup. This is it seems like some weird stuff's going on in oh, here. Oh, you're right. Yeah, if you're if you're, if you're Big P, whoever the actor was. Hey, if you're uh, I, what, uh, it, uh, uh, who's the guy from Bruce Springsteen that also was in The Sopranos? Uh, Bruce, uh, Stevie Van Zandt. Yeah, if I'm Stevie, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get a checkup. Didn't Big yeah. P already pass? Is he gone too? I don't know. I don't know why they didn't. They would have listed his name, wouldn't they? That same. I don't think it was recently. Oh yeah, like, maybe you're like, right. So- Big P did. Maybe you're right. Oh, you know, uh, Vincent oh. Pastore or Pastore? yeah, yeah, Vincent Pastore is he gone? Oh no, he's still around. Oh, okay, oh, good. good. Woo. Yeah, and Big P was always like he was a big boy, so like he should get a checkup too. <laughs> like if you're, just to make sure <laughs> we can't lose these people, Steve. These are these are our fake mobsters. We right, need these are the mobsters we looked up to. <laughs> It is time for listeners on the loose. This is where you pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. We got your calls. We got your texts at 917 on the rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on the rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW. The rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show, 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. When you be speaking, you better be listening to Steve's rule. It's a simple rule, BJ, and it's to show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, we're going to have to gong you. And then say goodbye. Goodbye, old friend. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Uh, so today, I don't know if you guys have heard sad news. Wally Cleaver just passed away. Tony Dow. Wow. I saw that Leave It to Beaver was trending on Twitter, and I didn't even think, oh, it could be. Sadly, I just thought maybe all the stars are no longer with us. So I was just like, oh, maybe something, an old video has resurfaced or something. But yeah, it turns out that Wally Cleaver passed. Gee, Wally. (laughs) I think, so I, 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 yeah, I think. That's the older brother for the Beav. Yeah. And Eddie Haskell, the guy that played him, passed away, I think, last year Uh or two years ago. Um, So mobsters and beavers. That's what we have to do. Mobsters and beavers. (laughs) Is he the, and I think Beaver's the only one alive, Jerry Mathers. I think he's it. Is Jerry still with us? I think he is. He, okay, I good. mean, I, 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 he was the younger dude. Wow, I mean, yeah, he, was, he is. Yeah, but How I think he's the only he? one. He's seventy-four years old. Whoa! Wow. And Wally had maybe five years on him. Maybe he was 70? seventy-seven. Seventy-seven. So, 77. Yeah. Wow, he seemed a lot older on the TV show. But he was only two years older. Yeah, okay, that's, yeah, that's TV for you. I don't remember yeah. much of the show. I remember watching it as a kid and thinking that Wally Beaver was cool. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you thought Wally was cool or Beaver was cool? Wally. Yeah, oh, Wally Cleaver. Yeah. Wally, Wally Cleaver, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought Wally was cool. Wally yeah. was Wally Beaver. Beaver's a, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, no, Beaver. Beaver's another person. I know. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you like Wally? I always thought Eddie Haskell was awesome just because he, he was, was so douche. full of crap. Of course you liked him. <laughs> yeah, he was so full of crap. Yeah. He was and the you knew worst, that, man. You knew Mrs. Cleaver knew. You knew that June was just like, you're a piece of, you're a POS, but I'm just going to let you go on your way. <laughs> she probably, he probably wanted a banger. You know that. Yeah, well, I, he definitely, you know, he, 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 with her. he had that charm with her. You're yeah. right. Yeah. I, you know, you, you makes you wonder. Maybe that's, uh, who knows what was going on with the Cleavers. Yeah. Did they try to like, do a new Leave it to Beaver? It was like the new Leave it to Beaver. And now they have lasted very long. <laughs> 1997. No. Yeah. I remember yeah. seeing that when I was a kid. I felt like it was just like you couldn't recreate the magic that that original crew had. It, it was, was also, a movie. <laughs> it was also known as Still the Beaver. Still That's the Beaver. Was. Still the Beaver, yeah. Was he in it? Was it what, what, like, did they, did, like what they did with Thurman Merman where they just said, you know what, we're going to get the original actor and let him, let him come back even though he's much older. Mm, looks uh, like, was Ken Osmond in the original one? Yeah, that, yeah. that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, Eddie Haskell. Yep, he was in it. Yeah, they brought, yeah, they brought him, they brought him all back. And it was problem, a, there was a TV movie called Still the Beaver, but Leave It the new Leave It to Beaver was an actual television show that they were trying to do. I don't oh, think it, it lasted like I don't yeah. even think a full season. 
It was like a handful of episodes, and it was yeah, just done. Yeah, I don't think they had anybody on there from the original, did they? In the new in the TV that, show, I, I can't remember. Yeah, I mean that. I, but Tony Dow actually directed a few of the episodes. He was a director. That's yeah. true. Mm-hmm. And it yeah. lo- it looks like the new Leave It to Beaver had four seasons and over a hundred episodes. What it did? Yeah, uh, on this Where? according to Wiki. Where so, was that? I only what? thought it lasted a half a season. No, did they, was that like on Disney or Freeform or something? I never, there even, I never even heard back of it. Then? I, well, who else would have run the damn show unless it was in syndication? Wow. Oh, All right. Well, yeah. anyway, good good for them. It was on public access. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would have been a whole different Leave it to Beaver. It's probably one of those syndicated shows where it's like whatever network in that city yeah. wants to spend the money, they can put yeah. it on. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. kind of like Small Wonder when I was a kid. It wasn't really on like in a set channel. It it's like, like, yeah, it, it looks like it's aired on the Disney Channel. started off with the movie, and then okay. it got onto the new Leave it to Beaver. Oh. And this ran on the Disney Channel from 84 to 85. And then in 86, the series was picked up by WTBS, which it aired until June of 89. Wow. Huh. So TB and, T- and so that's, I don't know if that's syndication really, because TBS was a national network. Uh, you know, the syndication you're talking about, Steve, is how Star Trek used to be, where it would, in every city, yeah. there would be Star Trek, but it would be on any, a different channel, like a UHF channel. Whichever channel is willing to drop the money on it. Yeah. 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 So, uh, wow. Four seasons. That's pretty damn good. Wow. Well, rest that's in peace, the- Tony Dow. Yeah. Tony Dow, <laughs> who, whose Wally is dead. Okay. Oh. We, well, we've well, this, I mean, really, we're just we're, we're just reporting a lot of death here. Yeah. All right, here's something that's not dead, and that's the Mariner season. Because <laughs> they won yesterday. Still, people are having a hard today. time believing. There's a segue. <laughs> Man, I don't know. It was still a decent turnout at, at, at T-Mobile Park last night. I was watching on TV. I mean, it, was, it clearly wasn't 40,000 like on Friday night and then Saturday and Sunday, but I think it was like, over 20,000, which these days is... That's, that's quite that's, a bit. That's pretty damn That's like that's a month's good. worth of fans at an Oakland A's game, so that's yeah, not bad. Really. <laughs> Somebody had a question. If it was up to you guys, would you have let J Rod compete in the eight, in the home run derby? Yeah, yeah, you have to. I I, I think you, you have to because you you know you gotta you, you you know baseball is also about star power and the whole MLB wanting to really you know get in and get a lot of younger fans. And I think J Rod did a good job for that. I I, re- I I really do. I think that. He was just, uh, you know, if you're a do a young kid, you know, home runs are cool. Home run, home runs are the cool thing, and I think J Rod did a good job. Oh. And I like that he put Seattle on the map because who's ever talked about the Mariners in, in any positive way? See, I'd be like J Rod, meet me in the office, and I'd be sitting there, and I'd have the schedule in my hands and the standings in my hands. I'm like, you really want to risk this so that you can have this moment with the home run derby? Your wrist is hurting. Especially if you knew his wrist was hurting. Yeah, that's a different story. You're right. I, I didn't know oh, that I didn't at know the time. His, yeah, if I didn't know his wrist was hurting, I'd be like, go crazy. Have fun. Let's do mm. a great job. But yeah, it's like, you're nursing a bad wrist. This is a chance for you to rest it. We have a, we're, we're trying to make the playoffs. No. Sorry, J-Rod. You can't do it. Yeah, that's a, it's a tough, that, it's not an easy question to answer. Uh, it really, really isn't. The oh, bigger it was question. easy for me. No. What are you crazy? Yeah. Well, yeah. there you go. <laughs> For me, it's uh, I see your side, and I also see the side of J. Rod going out there and putting on a good show like he did. Uh, which could, here's why. I mean, gosh, I, I mean, I, 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 until we see what the Mariners do at the trade deadline, I'm not too sure how 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 far this team can go, even if they make the playoffs, because the Yankees and Astros are so good. Oh, They're Mr. just Doom so good. Gloom here, man. I know. You but, sound like King Five's Twitter page. Yeah, well, if you watch the games and you just see how the Yankees have been dominating everybody they play, and the same thing with the Astros, it's it, it's like those two teams are be- like just so far ahead of every other team in the American League. It's 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 it's. I haven't seen a season like this in a long time where you go, you just have no chance against these guys. They're just so much better than everybody else. Well, I'm sure uh, people thought that in 2001, and we proved them wrong. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, they were unstoppable in the regular season. They, 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 were. They, they did not lose a single series that year. Yeah, I, I'm not saying you're wrong about that. That Until is the, the playoff difference. series. Yeah, then they did. Um, well, what better team to, to, to turn it all around, to reverse that magic? Uh, it, you know, I, it's, again, I think the Yankees, were the Yankees the wild card that year or did they win I their know. division? I can't remember. Um, I bet they were the wild card because it was the first round. So they, yeah, that, they wouldn't have faced them if it wasn't. So, all right, it can happen. It can happen. I, uh, but we'll see what the Mariners do. I mean, do you want to auction off the future to get, like you said, you were willing to, to get Juan Soto, the guy oh, from 100%. the Nationals. 
All right, so you're you're in. You think this is it? I'm a little worried about our pitching. I don't think we've got strong enough pitching to make that move. I don't think it's a position player thing. We definitely could use some more hitting, but oh man, Robbie Ray is killing me. I just if he was one better, bad game and you're all in poop city no, now, on dude. Him. Robbie Ray right, is, had a bad start too, but he's been good for a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Robbie Ray, I I don't think he's done much against any decent team. To be honest with you, I think he's had a hard time against good teams. If I if I'm remembering some of his bad starts, and, uh, and that's really you know, Steve, in the playoffs, you're going to be facing really really good offense. Uh, like the Astros, like the Yankees, and I don't know how Robbie's going to do against that, man. I mean, he, he hasn't shown he can stop those offenses yet. And I do like how you started this breakout with, okay, enough of the doom and gloom. <laughs> we're going to talk about the Mariners. I know, here we and are. And now we're doom and gloom. So we brought up a good point about J-Rod. He's like, he probably didn't want to skip out on that home run derby because he doubled his salary there. So he has that, a good, that's hard to argue, too. I'd yeah. pull out some cash if I was like the guy in charge. Be like, here's that money. You don't do the home run All right, derby. you know what? But don't tell anyone you got this from me. Go buy yourself yeah. some ice cream. I think that would have been a smart thing to do, Steve. Because a lot of these young dudes have their best years where they make nothing. And then, of course, they sign the big contract and never usually are as good as they were that earned them that opportunity in the first place. I, I, I've often thought baseball would be better if they paid a guy based on how well he did, not wait until he can get the big contract. Pay him for the greatest year he had. And I'll fire, then I'll get fired because I'll be part of a massive, like, you know, paying people under the table scandal with my, my team. Like, oh, no, yeah. worse than George Steinbrenner. Hey, great you, job. Come on in here. Just, <laughs> just reach your hand underneath the table. There's $50,000. Hey, you go. Good job getting that home run tonight, Ty France. Yeah. I don't think you have to do that. I think you could actually give people bonuses if you want to. I don't think you have to be underhanded. Well, it's less fun that way then. Oh, I see. All right. Uh, somebody uh, did say I have a conspiracy theory, and I believe the Mems have the All Star game next year, so they wanted, you know, they wanted Julio at the All Star game this year to put everybody to have the Mariners be in everybody's mind. Well, I, I, I mean. He earned it though. I mean, he. I mean, I don't know what kind no, of making him play it though. Oh, letting him play it, oh, making that's... sure that he plays it because you want people to talk about the Mariners and Julio Rodriguez yeah. is our guy. I mean, it, you know, they've already been awarded the game anyway, so no matter what he does, but but it, to drum it, up that interest, speech. Yeah, I, well, that's the whole idea. I mean, and I and that was my first point. He really put us on the map. Yeah, so I, I agree. All right, you and Brittany and Shelton. Well, see, Brittany and I, we've always... we, we I know got what? some tinfoil hats for the two of you. <laughs> oh, you do? You really? All, All right. right. It's going to be exciting, though. I mean, you know, really, next couple of weeks, or really, we're going to see exactly what the Mariners do, who they get, uh, and, and you know, it's, this is the and exciting What tattoo time. Danny and I are going to get when they make the playoffs? So excited. I do believe they're going to make the playoffs. I feel like they will. I just don't know. I, I, don't, I mean, I'm just worried about the playoffs. That's all. Let's just get to the playoffs, and then we can worry about the rest of it after Okay. That. Well, that's, I, I mean, this has been an ongoing issue with this team to get yeah. to the playoffs. Now I don't have gotta... any doom and gloom about that. I, okay, I, I mean, unless they have a massive collapse, they should get to the playoffs. And they can thank the Red Sox for that, because the Red Sox are the team that's going to be having a massive collapse right now. So I feel like they should be in good shape. You pick the topic, you guide the show. It is listeners on the loose, 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. You call us at text at 933, and you can see these guys at Pain in the Grass. Get tickets and info at KISW.com. BJ and Migs, mornings on the Rock, 99.9 KISW. Welcome to the CPAP Games live from the Hayes Bedroom. It's another eventful night, Bruce. It sure is, Ron. Steve has been flailing everywhere, struggling with this CPAP. His wife, Michelle, is as tense as a fiddle string, trying to contain her rage. Michelle's rolling Steve over. There he goes, and the mask is off. Oh, my, the snoring. Michelle throws an elbow, now a shove. And she's leaving for the couch, taking her place as the Hayes' 100-pound lab. Bask in that dog breath, Steve. With all this struggle, Steve should get Inspire. Absolutely, Bruce. Inspire is a sleep apnea treatment that gives you comfortable, restful sleep with the click of a remote. That's right, a button. As you sleep, Inspire keeps you breathing normally and sleeping peacefully. There's no mask and no hose. Just sleep. Learn more at InspireSleep.com. That's InspireSleep.com. Inspire, sleep apnea innovation. Inspire is not for everyone. Talk to your doctor to see if it's right for you and review important safety information at inspiresleep.com. 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Oh, here's a good one. This will get us arguing. I don't know. I feel like maybe all of us are on the same page, but we'll find out. All right. So I want to know. You got to answer this big pizza debate New York versus Chicago. New York. Chicago. New York 100%. New York, of course. Chicago 100%. 
Yeah, Chicago is yeah. not pizza. No, uh, that's lasagna. It is exactly pizza. Well, let's just say we're all going to agree on this, and you don't even agree that it's pizza. So, I mean, I feel like this is... It's I, good. I, I just don't consider it happens. pizza. Yeah. Uh, By me saying yeah. it's not pizza doesn't mean I don't love it. I just don't view it as pizza. Oh, agreed. 100%. Yeah. It's, it, 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 uh, yeah. it's a huge well, Italian it's meal that's going to kill you. The world disagrees with both of you, morons, so you're going to really have to get in line with it being pizza. And I, as much as it pains me to agree with Rev, I know, right? I have to say, I, I like Chicago style pizza better than New York style it's pizza. Hands down, my favorite. I had oh, it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I like it a lot better. I had it shipped to my house from Chicago to Tacoma. For my birthday. It's so good. So I'm, good. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm never going to be that person who's like, I can only like one or the other. Because I think that's such a silly argument. Like, you could like both. And you know but, what I want to say as well? But I'd much rather pizza from New York. I'd much rather pizza from Seattle, especially like uh, oh, anything you Homer. like... Homer. <laughs> not at all, man. I, I, look, I could have said Boston, where I grew up, but I'm not picking that pizza either. I think the Serious Pie style pizza, and a lot of people are doing that now, but I feel like Serious Pie was at least one of the first places I remember where they started making fe- pizza really cool and fancy. Um, Mia Posto was really good like that, too. Like the fancy-ass um, pizza. I, I, oh, I, love yeah, yeah. I, I will take that any day of the week over any slice of New York pizza or Boston pizza or I haven't tried new, you know, uh, Dion's yet. So I, I, I probably should someday if I ever get down. You know there. which one I would throw into that? And I'm, obviously, I'm always going to be loyal to New York pizza. But also, I would even throw into the argument and the conversation is Detroit style pizza. That's a good pizza. I would love to go to actually. I don't. This is the first time I've ever said this in my entire life. I would love to go to Detroit. I want to try and it try too. Detroit style pizza. However, there's some places here in Dino's. Seattle. It's Dino's, and then there's yeah. also one in West Seattle now too. Um, called I think it's called Moto Pizza. Let's mm-hmm. go there, Danny. It's sold out for like months on end. My wife was telling me about that. I yes. think she even asked you about uh, it. Yeah, we were talking like, about it. Yeah, she was like, "There's a wait list for it. There's wait, a wait, wait list. Wait. Oh, you can't oh. just show up and buy. It. You have to sign up like six oh. months in advance." For oh, so pizza. it's not. A, it's not a restaurant. No, it's a restaurant. But yeah, your you get people it. are outside right now. They've been in line for the last <laughs> six months. <Yeah. laughs> you have to you have to make a reservation first. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. All right, Danny, get that in there. But I'm not going to come till the bridge is all set, and they say September, your bridge will be back. So September 12th. <laughs> yeah, but for so. me, Dino's Pizza, which is not, it's, I don't know if it's Detroit style, but I think they have like it's it's almost like Detroit meets like Sicilian style. Yeah. Um, that's the best pizza in town. I love. Well, that place. tomorrow's an exciting day for us, Steve. Because we're trying, uh, we're trying pizza twist, which is an Indian, Eastern Indian twist on pizza. And we're going to do that in Issaquah. And they, they, I think they also have a place in Redmond too. I am very excited to see how, uh, you know, how that goes. Is it's a, I think a relatively new franchise. It's called Pizza Twist. Pizza Twist, yeah. And yeah, they, pizza sauce on this thing. Uh, well, I mean, you know, you can get well, traditional. Yeah. Oh, it's got pineapples on it, so I'm in. There we go. I mean, oh, they got, uh, dude, it's it's a mixture of Indian cuisine and everything that they bring to the table with uh, American pizza sauce. And they also do dude. it with uh, Italian food. Like, they're taking some of the Italian cuisine and fusing it together with Indian cuisine. If you worked, like, the masala sauce onto a pizza... I'd be down with that. Dude, I had the masala macaroni and cheese, and, yeah. you know, it was pretty tasty. Ooh, they got a vegan one. Uh, well, there you go. You're in. I am. You're in. I don't know how, outside of Redmond and uh, Issaquah, don't know. Finally, the east side might have something that you South Enders don't have because you guys seem to have everything down there. Yeah. We'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, we still got, really? our, we got our mod pizza. Wow. I can't believe. Yeah. You know what? Also, I, I have to be. Yeah. I always, if I have a chance, I would like to go to a mod pizza over New York style pizza, too. And it looks like there's one in Seattle, one in Issaquah, one in Linwood, Redmond, and Kent. Oh, no, not the Kent one, but all the other ones. All right, so it's not south, unfortunately. So Seattle's as south as they go. So I said Detroit pizza blows Chicago pizza out of the water. It's crispy cheese at the ed- on the edges. Dude. Yeah, the burnt cheese. Detroit is yeah. underrated for their pizza. But it yeah. looks bad because they it burn does. it. It, it looks, looks like you screwed up a pizza. And it looks yeah. like you cooked it in something very unsanitary because it's like it's like that old <laughs> yes, those yeah. old pans. The cast the, irons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can tell like they, they just got years of use on them. That's when it tastes better. You're not yeah. so yeah, you're not supposed to wash those at all. The carcinogens is what makes it taste really great. Mm-hmm. Oh, carcinogen. Thank you. <laughs> I love eating bad stuff. Oh, the carcinogen. Oh. I'm being carcinogen. <laughs> Wikipedia, <laughs> just coming in with the with the info. Right. I know. Well, oh, what like else that is burnt there? thing. Like when I was a kid, I loved eating burnt food, whether oh, it was a tortilla same. or something. And then I found out, like, oh, you shouldn't do that. The carcinogens. And I'm like, and that's me making fun of it. It's like I'm going to eat the burnt food and the burnt everything until the day I, I love, die. Like, like burnt ends on like mm. even like on like like um, a barbecue mm. when you get like the, yeah. the, the burnt tips. 
Bart's good in some in a lot of situations. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, I, I, you know what? I, I have never had Detroit pizza in Detroit, but I have been to Detroit, a very underrated city, only because of the bad rap it, it got. But they had a, a revitalization many years ago. I, and, I, and, I, and if you talk to uh, Fred Jacobs, who's a, a radio guy who loves Detroit, and he, and he will tell you all day long what a great city is because that's his home city. And so, if you ever <laughs> disparage it at all, I, I, I'll see Fred at conventions. He'll go, BJ, I listened to your show and you were disparaging Detroit. Oh. It's a good city. They done a great job revitalizing it i'm getting a shirt printed from when we go to our radio convention it just says <laughs> detroit sucks and then oh. a small print except for their pizza yes. and m&m you know what if you sit in the <laughs> front M&M. row you should do it <laughs> yeah. M&M. sit in the front row you know fred fred will go off on you because he takes it personally He'll derail the entire yeah. the whole I, thing I, I say do it. i'll just sit the there shirt. with my legs spread open like leaned out like, yeah. like i'm like lounging in my house take I up like pay for that chairs. shirt yep. have it on the back say you mad fred like you turn around once he starts calling you out. Do it. <laughs> Steve, I will pay for that shirt if you get it done because he's he usually makes one of the first presentations at our convention. I'll pay for it if you will I feel like it. if I walk the, the streets of Chicago, I'd get a lot of like high fives. <laughs> yeah. I'm walking around with a shirt that just says Detroit sucks. <laughs> Yeah, yes, I, you're probably right about that. <laughs> and it, it, it rings true with my like you know hockey love for like I, I've always despised the Red Wings, much to the despair of our listeners that are Red Wings fans. It always give me crap back, but it's always a fun little rivalry. Well, yeah, I mean they've had a, they've had quite a storied franchise over there. Yeah, two zero six four two one Rock Texas and seven seven nine nine nine. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. So the Migs, your lemon video with Tatum is the funniest thing I've ever <laughs> seen. I was super stoned last night, and I legit watched it at least 50 times and laughed each time all night long. I hope you don't mind, but I screen recorded it and sent it to my entire, my entire family. Everybody thought it was the dumbest and funniest thing ever. Oh, this could be a viral video. Did you Have you put it anywhere where it can be viral, or did he just happen to see it? I mean, it? I don't know if it's going to go viral, but I put it everywhere that people, if it, that way, because it is the dumbest thing, and I felt like anyone who follows me on any social media, I need to put it on all of them. So it's on my Instagram, on my Twitter, it's on my I haven't TikTok. seen this yet. Oh, it's a Snapchat filter. Oh. We were just saying, so Tatum and I were having a dance party last night. We we're listening to our favorite song, Woomp, There It Is, as we always okay. do. And then I was like, you know, I want to record it, but in order to record it, I'm playing it on my phone. I can't record it on my phone unless it's a stupid hack, but like if I, I pull up Snapchat, I can record her and it'll keep the music playing. So I'm like, oh. I'm just going to do that. But then we went down the wormhole of the Snapchat filters. And all of them are funny with the wigs, and we're having a blast. I got a bunch of random ones I screen recorded. But the one that drove her up, uh, just cracked her up left and right, and we could not stop laughing, was the one where it changes your face into a lemon, oh, except for yeah. your mouth and your eyes. And so the video is just me and her just talking, but she thinks it's the funniest thing because we're talking as lemons and it's 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 so dumb. nothing of that was edited either like it wasn't like as if like we it was just completely on the fly and it was completely absurd and dumb and i think that's the the that's the the charm of it but i'm like i'm going i'm a lemon and she's like i like lemons it's so dumb pj wow that but, is i mean I'm, I'm looking at the video right now and it is exactly as you said i don't know if fred to, can pull up the audio but yeah you, i got it if I you want to hear it. tatum dude it's so silly yeah, and i'll picture her she's seeing herself as a lemon which as a toddler it's a lot to comprehend because all the other videos she has hair so she's trying to touch it or sunglasses she's trying to touch it so her mind is blown that She's a lemon, and also at first, you'll hear it in the audio, she's a little confused that she doesn't have any lemon arms. <laughs> Here we go. I don't have lemon arms. Hey, now your turn. <laughs> hey, I'm a lemon. <laughs> me too, real blue lemons. <laughs> Daddy, me too. Me too, we're lemons. <laughs> I like being lemons. She likes being lemons. Yeah. <laughs> That's so adorable. Oh, my so God. So dumb. But I was like, I got to share this. It's so dumb. It's, is, it's, uh, my wife and I could not stop laughing last night watching that video. That is, uh, man, and dude, yeah, if you've had a little uh, a little herbal alteration, you could probably watch that for a long time. I One guy commented that. said, I'm so glad I'm not high watching this. Yeah. yeah. That is, uh, boy, that is that is something. I feel like I need to go to that summer meltdown festival where people are going to be tripping over the weekend <laughs> and oh, just yes. like, put that video in front of them and see them panic. <laughs> oh yeah, that's awesome. Oh man, it's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. Two zero six four two one rock. Text us at seven seven nine nine nine. I have never heard of this style of pizza. Pizza talk on the rock. Okay, buffalo style pizza, not What's buffalo that? chicken pizza. 
It's a sweet sauce, lots of cheese, not a thin New York style crust. It's breadier, a little pepperoni that curls up into those grease cups and gets burnt on the edges. That's what's up. Interesting. Ooh, yeah. now I, you know, it's funny. Gosh, I don't remember that. And, you know, I wonder. And, and, it looks like Rochester, Detroit style pizza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Unless Rochester didn't want to be part of that. I mean, because Rochester's not far, and I lived in Rochester. <laughs> it's not far from Buffalo, but I don't remember that pizza at all. Yeah, according according to the the tagline on this article, uh, the Buffalo style has a Detroit amount of Detroit amount of cheese with a Motor City trim, a main undercarriage, and a New York City sole. I'm in. Oh, okay. This sounds amazing. The light, okay. fluffy crush, uh, crust, uh, almost like that the the focaccia bread. Yeah, yeah, with this, that semi sweet sauce that you were talking. And about. dude, I love those when the pepperonis curl up into little grease cups. Mm. Oh, the, I mm. I hate that the most. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Yeah. What's yeah. your issue with it? I don't think we can talk it, to Rev about pizza. It anymore. looks. We we don't see eye to eye. <laughs> I love said, Rev, but I don't see eye to eye with his no. pizza. You said the exact thing that makes it, me turn off from it. They turn into little grease cups. Oh. So you see them fill up with the grease. It's like a gusher, but. With grease. But with grease, you have to grease. literally cover it with like a paper towel in order to get all of that off. That's it's the best so kind of pizza. so nasty looking. Really? Because I think a lot, I mean, people do that because they're trying to, I guess, be healthy. But the grease is like, mm, I mean, that's a big part of pizza, man. Yeah, I know. But just when you see it like that, it's about Oh, no, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. No. <laughs> no. And I don't want it to drip onto the paper towels. I want it to drip in my belly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Buffalo style. Man, you know what? I don't good, I, man. I don't remember, and Steve, it never made it to Plattsburgh, right? No, yeah. So I don't, re- I don't remember our, I, yeah, Plattsburgh pizza. It was only because of this one pizza place, but it was pretty much, but with the exception of chain food pizza places, there was one place called Pizza Bono, and I've shared it with you guys before. But this was, it was a big ass New York style slice, like the kind that you would fold in half. It might even take two paper plates to kind of hold the whole thing, a big slice, and then you would ask for cold cheese on top of it. And they would just take the cheese that they would oh, use to make the pizza, right. uh, that, yeah, that shredded I, cheese. Oh, I never had And they that. would just take a handful and put and just throw a giant clump of cold cheese on it. Mm. Sounds see for you, it sounds like a great idea. I mm-hmm. thought it would sound like the worst thing in the world until I drunkenly had it, and I was like, "This is like heaven in your mouth." Oh, I it's love like cold the first mozzarella. time you have cold. It's like the first time you have cream cheese on a hot dog, dude. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And then after that, you can never go back. Like even sober, drunk, if you went to Pizza mm. Bono. Everybody in line would be like, yeah, throw some cold cheese on that. You want that cold cheese pizza? You know it. (laughs) The great thing about this pizza debate is that we're not saying we turn down any of these pizzas. True. (laughs) No, we're going to eat all of them. Right. That's where it all started. Like, I was like, I'm right. I don't like, I don't, I don't think Chicago style pizza is the best pizza, but I'm also not going to say no to it because it's delicious. We're going to go get it every single time we go to Chicago. (laughs) Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. That I, 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 I'm, I'm so looking forward to Chicago for that reason. So (laughs) looking forward to it. Oh, it's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. But more importantly, rather than you guiding the show, I think it's time for me to ask an important question. Uh oh. And that is, what do Ryan Castle and a landline phone have in common? Well, I'm going to tell you at 9:50 on the Rock. BJ and Migs mornings on the Rock 99.9 KISW. And now. The Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and a landline phone have in common? They're wired? Yeah, they're wired, all right. Hardwired. Hardwired. So it said they're both only handled by grandmas and Steve. Or Steve's yeah. grandma. Oh, he's a dirty boy. bird. Yeah, I'll bring her into it. Not good. Someone showed kids between the ages of 6 and 18 photos of old technology to see which ones they could correctly identify. And you know what? Uh, only half of them could identify a landline phone. Oh, why do we have to go through this? We don't need yeah. more reminders of why we're closer to death. Yeah. Well, and I think it's also fair to note that 16 to 18-year-olds are pretty dumb. Whoa. Here we go. Six-year-olds? Six-year-olds can be kind of not that dumb. Um, how about uh, they didn't recognize a fax machine? Only 38% of them. So a lot of them were like, I don't know what this it's is. Probably like, what is this printer? Here's the one that's going to get you guys. 29% can only identify an original Nintendo NES out of, you know, between 6 and 18. That's insane. Okay, those, they're dumb because it says right on it, Nintendo. <laughs> that's a solid point. <laughs> At least the landline doesn't say phone. 
Uh, there is, there is. What is machine. this? A washing machine? <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> is this a toaster? Where do I put my bread? Unfortunately, none of them could identify what a 12 pack was, but I'll tell you, it's full of awesome. And Ryan Castle, he's got it next. BJ and Mix play of the day. He's got over $500,000 raised in online donations. Why? Oh, all he did was save four children and an 18 year old from a burning house in Indiana. Oh, so yeah. not much. Uh, it's a break this year, BJ, but apparently the rock cut wind of what this kid did. He's going to put him in the next uh, Fast and the Furious movie. Is, is that really true? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so let's see if you, how you react. To it. I, had, I had to ask. I think BJ uh, almost threw something for a second. I really I did. I, he was I, conflicted. I, I was like, "This freaking rock! Does he have to be involved in everything?" BJ and Migs mornings on the Rock ninety nine point nine KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How much does bankruptcy cost? Well, bankruptcy costs, of course, vary depending on what type of uh, case you're filing. There's a certain amount of, of, of court costs and other out-of-pocket costs that you're going to have in any case. Uh, the, the filing fees in a bankruptcy case are, are about $300, whether you file Chapter 7 or Chapter 13. Uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're shopping for bankruptcy attorneys or, or looking at the different cost options is that a lot of times, the, especially the really cheap uh, places, don't tell you up front about the, all the court costs and whatnot that you're going to have to pay in addition to the attorney fees. So make sure that you get the full picture when you're talking, when you're comparing prices of bankruptcy lawyers on what the attorney fees are, how much your court costs are going to be so that you can really make a true comparison. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis. Travis anytime at choose the right chapter.com.